Today we're going to be struggling through the Steam release of Dwarf Fortress. I'm extremely excited to be back because Dwarf Fortress is pretty much the granddaddy of all games. Like, RimWorld and Minecraft are both inspired by this game, at least in part. So I, I think the least I can do is, like, pay tuition to Tarn and Zack and, like, just have a fort that goes horribly wrong. So if you are good at the game, you're going to get frustrated with this series. If you are a complete beginner, you might learn something. But my one regret, because I did a lot of Dwarf Fortress when I first started my channel in 2017, was I often felt like I was memorizing steps and I didn't really understand the deeper systems. So I think that the best way is just to go back through. You'll learn something if you're a total beginner, but I don't want people to watch this series and get upset. <laughs> um, this is like my very, very basic outline of a fort like we had storage going we had different areas for different stuff we had some workshops we were starting to dig deeper we had like some farms for plump helmets but somehow i lost my plump helmet seeds despite the fact that i'm brewing them there's a lot of deep systems in this game and there's honestly at the beginning there's a lot of memorizing i have people in chat right now who are like 2,000 hours in and they still learn about this game, but I think that's one of the reasons why it's an amazing game and a wonderful game to struggle through so i'm really looking forward to that Anyway, I'm about like, I estimated it at about 30 to maybe 40 hours in Dwarf Fortress, plus maybe another 10 hours reading about the game. Uh, I'll say this, like, Nookrium has some amazing tutorials on this game, and I learned most of the stuff I know about it from him, so go definitely check out his guides. A lot of the key presses are kind of defunct now that we're in the Steam version, and Wasta has changed everything. You know, the WASD keys that they added in. Um, but I'm going to start at Ford from scratch. This is like w the very basic outline of maybe two hours of play i was really enjoying watching my favorite streamers struggle through though here we got some bedrooms we got some offices this seemed to be about as far as most people were getting yesterday but um i want to go over at least how to get this very basic stuff we'll probably get killed by a bunch of zombie invasions uh we're, we're gonna hit a wall at times we're probably gonna starve to death we're just gonna welcome it. This series is gonna get cut short, but I like you need to just keep dying in this game in order to get better at it. So I, I think without any further ado, let's get into it. And I, I will just um, I, I, I guess just before we begin, I'll say why is it worth learning such a complicated game? It's way deeper and more under the hood with more rewarding systems for like power users than RimWorld. So for example, you can create like a drowning chamber for your enemies as they come in. There's like deeper, more um, involved social relationships. Like if I look at my units, they have all of these extra thoughts and things like that. Like, oh my gosh, she felt fondness talking with a friend. She felt euphoric due to inebriation. I feel euphoric due to inebriation. Very exciting, Dwarf Fortress. You have a left hand and a right hand in this game. It's just so much more detailed in many ways. So it's very rewarding for people who kind of want to geek it out, that is to say. And there are ways, now that they hit the Steam release, of making this game like very visually appealing. Um, which is often like what prevents people from getting into it. Like we have a raven over here. We're going to follow the raven. And look, we're flying through the sky with a raven. What's an am what an amazing game this is. Anyway, more amazing knowledge like this... Um, and more, and there's more uh, to come. So anyway, I can teach you some of the basics. So let's go ahead back out to the, um, let's just abandon the fortress to ruin. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Let's go back to the title. Um, I'll save this timeline, although I probably shouldn't. And we're going to start a new fort from scratch. Okay. Ah, uh, Dwarf Fortress, which actually causes my, um, my graphics card to explode. Now let's go ahead and create a new world. Uh, I just want to go from the very beginning. So pretty much we need to create a world from scratch when we first start. Um, I'm going to just simulate something very small, like small boy world, because we're probably not going to get to see a lot of it. There we go. Fortress mode. Start tutorial. We're going to be beginning in the world of Ushalathon. So here we go. It's selecting an embarkment site for us. I like that they've simplified this part because there's a lot that can go wrong in selecting your embarkment site. Ooh, and this looks like a really good area. There we have a cliff to mine into. This is what I wanted. The Dwarven Outpost. So we are a bunch of dwarf nomads who are settling land um, for, I guess, our clan of dwarves. And more are expected to arrive later on, but we're kind of expected here to set up civilization for the other dwarves. So we're going to begin at OK, and there we go. I'm just going to X out of all of the tutorial stuff. You can go through. There's a nice little tutorial that gets you started with the basics of what to know, especially 
excuse me, a little bit about the Steam version. And this part with all of the, like, what to do when is quite useful. But a lot of it I already know if you do the wiki of the Dwarf Fortress Quick Start Guide. There's also a flow chart on the Dwarf Fortress wiki, which is quite helpful of what to do when. Because oftentimes I get to the end of the list of steps of what to do and I am just confused. So that will give you... Like, there are very good text-based tutorials to this game. Okay, so let's just talk about the way that the game is set up a little bit. Pretty much, um, I want you guys to think of this, and I'm going to describe this exactly the way that Nook described it when I first watched his tutorials of the game, which, again, those are fantastic, and make sure you watch those. But it's pretty much like we're looking at a 2D version of Minecraft, right? Um, and we're looking down at each layer of the world. Here we're in the sky. We are very high up in the sky, and the sky is blue, okay? But then as we start to, I'm going to bring down the elevation by scrolling in with the mouse wheel. Um, and here we're starting to see the tops of the trees. And when we come back, and when we come down into the world, now we're getting close to the trees. And now we're on the first layer of leaves at the top of the mountain. There's the bottom of the mountain down there, and it's lower elevation. We can't see it as well. But as we come in, we're starting to see more of the trees. We're starting to see their trunks and their branches. And then we're getting cross sections of trunks. And now we're starting to see the finally the tops of the hilltop. And I'm just going to zoom in here. And as we go in, um, we're starting to see stuff on the ground. And we can, you know, we get the information on it here, obviously. You can see that. But now we're starting to see cross sections of mountains. So this is, um, <coughs> excuse me, a loamy sand wall. So we can do planting on this part, but also too, as we get further down, we'll start to see like, you know, um, metamorphic rocks and things like that. Very dense stuff. Amazing, right? Maybe even some lava or some like ancient caverns if we get further down. But now we're on the section cro second cross section of hill and whoops, I just zoomed in. I meant to go down further. Let's go down further because it looks like our dwarves here are like pretty much situated on the side of a mountain. So all of this is just the cross section of the mountain. That is to say, here's the interior of the rock. And then as we go down, like they could go down into the valley. I like mining into the side of a wall personally because I can't remember why there's supposed to be something horrible that can happen if you go straight down, but I can't remember. Um, <laughs> though we could dig just straight down, I think it's kind of cool to mine into the side of a wall, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, the very first thing that we want to do, what the hell do we want to do first? Uh, probably dig. So let's go ahead and check out our dwarf laborers. Um, task information menu, we've got... I, these new menus are different from how they are in the original Dwarf Fortress, and some of the key presses got changed, so I'm going to struggle again a little bit here. But yeah, we've got M for mine. Most of the hotkeys are fairly intuitive, but I'm just positing that. I'm going to make our entrance to our mine really, really small. And we're going to uh, uh, quote uh, Simon of the Yogg's cast, and we are going to diggy diggy hole our way in. He was actually at the stream yesterday, which was like kind of in... I had a big fanboy moment uh, there for a second. But let's go ahead in here and let's just kind of plan out. Actually, let's just take a moment to plan a bit. So we're going to be digging up and down in. Digging straight down can usually end with rain coming in and flooding because of... Yes, yeah, so Chili... Thank you, Chili Dog Dave. Ch actually, you're probably going to be my light and savior for most of the stream because I'm going to lean heavily on what experienced players actually know. I like, to, I like speaking to the total beginner, at least at the beginning, because I, it makes me feel like I have some idea of what's going on around me. Anyway, we're going to dig into the mountain, and let's have, like, a fairly long entrance, because, I don't know, maybe we'll want to put, like, traps in here later on or something like that. So let's have, a qu like, quite a long entrance to our mine. Maybe this will create some sort of inefficiency, but hey, if things actually don't go bad, <laughs> maybe we'll have a defensible fort, which would be amazing. And we have so much room back here, and look at all the layers that we have underneath. I'm going deep down into the earth. Look, we have... I'm just going to do this all the way in. We have... Let's just count up. Look at how high that number goes up. Wow, negative 95. Uh, what a what a number. Uh, that, that would an amazing number. So we have like hundreds of levels beneath us. So don't worry about running out of space or stone. That's a ridiculous notion. Um, just use all the space that you can on these upper levels because I find that this seems to be more like precious in space. Anyway, we are going to want like a meeting area. So let's go ahead. Maybe this is a bit much because we probably won't survive quite that long. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> Make a meeting area right around here. I'll say that the Steam version is very comfortable for doing these designations. You used to do this with mouse, or just with keyboard, and it's a little bit trickier, in my opinion. Okay, so our minor dwarf, who is who is this? Irvad Ing... I'm going to try... I'm going to go for it. Ing... Ingizados. Minor. 
Um, he's mining out the Dolomite cave floor. So what is he up to? He's a tough guy. He is 63 years old. Um, he's a man. Uh, poor spatial sense, high stamina, bad with words, cheerful, prone to discord. Who knows what that means? I'm not entirely certain. Some of these things just seem like fluff to me still because I'm not really good with interpreting some of these things. However, uh, we can get like a log of his mood and everything. If he's annoyed when caught in the rain, satisfied at work, so I guess it was raining. Um, finished up some work. I'm very satisfied. I don't really know why he's thinking that. We could follow him with this button. And you can do this in the uh, legacy version of Dwarf Fortress too, which is actually one of the ways to make the game feel just a little bit more visually stimulating. I find that for some people that might be kind of a struggle session of just like getting into it visually. But um, I don't know, personally I really enjoy the graphics. Anyway, um, so what other things should we do? Uh, okay, so another thing that we want to start to look for right away because we obviously are going to need to take of like... Um, uh, food, clothing, and shelter. I'm not really going to think about clothing since they have a lot of it, but um, let's go ahead and see. Uh, oh, yes, the skills tab. We should probably look at that. Citizen, in is that under the citizen information menu? I think it's under labor. Okay, no, here it is. I'm just going to not show that again. Um, okay, so our miners. We have a miner, we have a woodcutter, and we have a fisher dwarf, and I think that's pretty much all that we wanted to start with. Um, planting just kind of like happens. I'm not entirely sure why these labors take place when they're not even checked off, but, like, I've seen that they have happened, so I'm not worried about that happening. Um, other stuff, too, I learned, like, apparently cats don't eat. I don't even know if that's... I have yet to, like, confirm that through my own experimentation, but, like, you guys are amazing, and you've taught me so much about this game. Anyway, kind of moving forward, we've got our one dwarf mining over there, but let's, like, go have the other dwarves do something else while we have so much land here. So we do have water... But pretty much everywhere is designated as a fishing space if we don't designate one. So I'm just going to continue to allow that. One amazing thing about this game is that there's like this... Uh, what I'm going to call, for lack of a better term, is it technically cellular automata that's going on with the water? But like you do have water fullness on each... Like you have fluid dynamics going on in some sense. Which is quite amazing. Also a very good soundtrack in this game too. They did a good job on the Steam version. Anyway, so you've got seven full of the water. It, it's indexed zero through eight so that you know that Tarn and Zach are like true computer programmers, which is why this number adds up to seven. This is a full brook of water, but this is over the brook, which is why it's not full. It seems to go down one level and then it terminates when we get into the earth. I'm just going to have my other dwarves like gather up some plants. I'm using G for this because uh, gathering plants is, is a G kind of thing to do. Uh, but there we are, and let's go ahead, let's just have them cu cut down some trees, just for the sake of argument. Oh, cool, we've got like a big tree trunk here. How amazing is that? Oh my gosh, I've never seen a tree that big before. Wow, so amazing. Anyway, um, let's go ahead, whoops, that was the gather section. I do like the, like, the very simple UI that they've put together, because there's so much content in Dwarf Fortress, but, like, that's amazing to see. And I've, uh, have I turned back on time? Let me just kind of, like, scroll up for a second. So we can see our other dwarves get to work. We've got only that one guy mining. But yeah, here go our other dwarves. They're walking over that way, and they're going to be gathering up plants. They look kind of like Dragon Ball Z to me. I don't know what it is. But yeah, there they are. They're underneath the tree. One thing that I've noticed is that some of the dwarves will, like, down the tree onto themselves, and then we get a notification that they're in combat with the tree, if I'm interpreting that right. And I actually find that very funny. Also, extremely, like perhaps worrisome because probably they could die from it but i'm just willing to like live with that and it's nice to at least see like some type of work like this going on they can crush themselves so that's why i've given them these outrageously large trees actually maybe let's just undesignate those because i haven't even seen these yet and i'm sure one of my dwarves will probably like crush himself you can also get like leaves falling off of trees and other neat stuff like that so one thing that I'm a little bit admittedly worried about right now is I don't see any sand. Um, we need like loamy soil or sand or something like that to start. We could go back up to the top of the mountain. I don't really want them to have to do like all of their planning up there. We could irrigate, but I don't actually know how to irrigate, so I don't want to do that. Um, hang on a second. We've got like giant... I'm told that you can't follow vermin in this game. I wanted to follow a bunch of vermin around, but I don't seem to know how to do it. So I'm just going to live with that. Anyway, let's go ahead and loamy sand wall. So we do have a little bit of loamy sand above us. This might be good because I don't want our farming to get in the way of our defenses. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll let him diggy diggy hole down there. And then we're going to go ahead and 
Um, I'm just going to kind of like sample some of this area. Peach tree roots, loamy sand wall. So this is our home down here. This is the entry to our home, that little triangle right there. So let's just try to get close to this loamy sand wall and like maybe directly above it. Oh, or maybe we could dig upward. We could do that too. That might be a good way to show this. And then we can show how we get our farms in along with that. So let's try that. That way we keep one secure entrance to our cave. So I'm going to go ahead and start designating more for Urvad in Ingizados to do. And let's go ahead. This will be like our meeting area right here. I just want it to be kind of defensible. And then we'll go back maybe like five squares. And then we're going to put in the entrance to our... This is going to be like a little bit asymmetrical. So this is going to bother me. I'm trying to think of a better way to do it. Nope, it's just going to have to be a bit asymmetrical. We'll, or we'll go for like a 3x3 three three staircase. I don't know if that's going to kill everyone. <laughs> I was trying to test out if I could like destroy the cave supports the other night and just kill all my dwarves. Just because I wanted to make some more mistakes. But nope, we're just going to learn more of this. Again, it will probably end in a horrible way. Maybe I should be saving at like more normal intervals here. Let's save and continue playing. Um, and we'll call this loser fort because we're probably going to die <laughs> um <laughs> yeah now again like i said there's just so much saving time because my graphics card is exploding with heat from playing this game um so let's go ahead and we should be able to start to designate out now that our other dwarves are kind of just like idly standing by there we could start to do oh we could do a meeting area in here um, but I really just want to give them some other task to do. So let's do something, because you're probably going to have a lot of idle dwarves. I don't want to do a lot of this, but let's smooth the walls to our meeting area. Maybe that would be fun and exciting to do. I usually just do this when I don't know what to do with dwarves, because it gives them something to do over time. But it makes sense because it is the meeting area, and like it might as well be kind of a nice area. I've seen this kind of, this is kind of cool, engraving artwork into a smoothed wall. Can we do that in the floor too? I saw this in... Like, just, this is partly the Steam version. It just looks so amazing. Um, can I do that into the floors yet? Carve a gap into a wall to allow it. Nope. Carve a track into a stone floor. Tracks are used by minecarts. That is so cool, but I'm probably not going to do it right now. Um, let's just smooth all the floors. And then, yeah, maybe we'll do some artwork on that. So I'm just going to X, cancel these things. Now, fortunately, this has hung over from the, um, from the, excuse me, from legacy version. Um, oh no! Oh, we've already got to smooth the wall in order to do it. Okay, so we got to make the walls smooth, boy, first. So that makes sense. Let's do a little bit of this just because I want my dwarves to go in and do something. I mean, for me, kind of the first primary concern is making the game just like... Like, it's hard to get feedback in this game at times. And just seeing that your dwarves are doing something that they're supposed to be doing is probably rewarding for a new player. So I figure we might as well go over some things, even if they're a bit extraneous. All right, okay, let's go ahead and dig down. And this is D and T, and I've already got some of these hotkeys down. This is great. So designation is a little bit funny for stairs, so we're going to go, like, we're going to do a 3x3 three three area. If I'm not supposed to do 3x3 three three stairs, because I usually do 2x2 two two stairs, can someone please stop me right now so that I don't get everyone killed? Otherwise, I'm just going to do 3x3 three three because it's going to con uh, continue with my beautiful symmetry. And we're going to dig upward. I think we're going to go... Three by three is fine. Okay, good. So we're not all going to die. Okay, let's go upward. So I've actually scrolled upward. We're on elevation 45. Now we're going up to 46. Um, I've inverted my mouse controls because it just feels a little bit more natural to me. And we're going to make a stairway there. So this is from a down to an up stairway. This doesn't go any higher up, but down on this floor below, we should start to see... Oh, wait, can we dig upward with our stairs? Oh, no, I may have actually done this wrong. If I did, then I am kind of a dingus. Oh no. I am a bit of a dingus. Wait, did I? Ah. Okay, I'm wondering if I can do this from the top down to the bottom now. Okay, I should have probably started this fort one layer up then. It is unfortunate that I did not do that. Okay, something has just happened that I don't fully understand. So you can dig from up to down, but you can't dig from down to up in building stairways. I'm guessing that I need, like, some sort of stone slab in order to dig upward. Build structures. St ah, thank you. Um, do we actually have the stone for that? We might be able to make it of this dolomite, or we might actually need to construct it. So let's go ahead and muddle through a little bit here. Like I said, we are going to be muddling through a little bit. 
Um, but thank you for that. I do appreciate that. You can start to dig from the wall. Okay, so we should be good. Yes, so we'll do it that way. Okay, a little bit unintuitive because it's not under the dig, but that's, for example, Dwarf Fortress can at times feel like coding, where if you don't do something perfectly the way that the game wants it to be done, it will stop you, although there is often a way to do it. Um, it's just not really taking the information in the way that you want it to be done. So let's go ahead and do um, build, what is it again? Uh, constructions, who just had the information on it? Build, cons okay, there we go, constructions and stairs. I'm just making sure that this is the right type of stairway. Span at least two elevations, require a boulder, block, or wood. So let's see if we can do it this way. So we're going to try that again, and we're going to go up. Whoops, we just went down. Let's go up and try that. And that didn't actually work. Um, you can dig up, but only into wall. Cannot stand flat areas. So let's just do this like the old-fashioned way that I suck at it. There's probably a way to do it, but there might be like some subtle control that I'm missing here. So again, we're muddling through. Let's just go ahead and mine deeper into this mountain. So what I'm going to do instead now, just because I know I'm going to need to go up on this floor above. And in fact, I'm comfortable just digging down. I'm fine with it if our farms are separate from our main area. Um, is our miner going off to mine? I just want to make sure of that. It's fine. They're just about done smoothing. Uh, good. Our miner is still mining and the smoothers are smoothing. I'm just going to call everyone else a smoother for right now. <laughs> Though what we could probably do here, and we might as well because we're doing so much mining, let's go ahead into our task information menu. Let's go into our labor menu and just make someone else a miner if we can too. So you're a planter. Um, well, you're a mason. We might as well have you do this. Or even the expedition leader. We could have our expedition leader do some mining as well. Um, that's good. I mean, it's probably good. It might not be good. <laughs> Just to be completely honest with you. But here, this is amazing. Okay, so now we've got this loamy sand cavern floor. Um, so here we go. And I'm totally fine with this. They just have to like walk up and out for a second if they want to get to this area. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and just dig over. I know I'm not doing it perfectly fine, but I don't want to like totally mess it up. Let's just do it this way. Here we go. Do it on the floor you start and then dig up and make more stairs. Oh, if we dig up and then we do that. Actually, that could work. We might do a separate farm. Let's just do it this way for the sake of argument right now. I don't want, like, I want to muddle through a little bit, but I want to wait until we're like 40 minutes in before I really start muddling through. Just because I want to make sure I'm like holding the hand of totally new players so that they have some idea of what's going on around them. <laughs> um, but yes, after that, I will probably, like, it will be a great struggle bus the rest of this, uh, the rest of the steam stream. In the meantime, let's go ahead and start digging downward because we know that we're at the very least going to be doing that. Um, and we'll dig down from the up part and then actually let's go down a few layers because I know I'm going to want to. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I'm trying to do the cancel while I'm still in the dig menu, but you have to make sure you go out of the dig menu by hitting escape and then you do it. So you have to do dig then, whoops, not dig. I'm really not using the UI too, too much here. Or whoops, sorry, not dig, mine, I meant to say, DT, uh, and then we go down here, and I'm going to go down a few floors. So, like, now we're going all the way beneath the surface, even at the bottom of the mountain. You can see that we can get this subterranean river up there. Quite exciting, um, unless if we accidentally mine into it. Let's make sure that we have some other work for everybody else to do. Let's do V and, what is this, uh, M for smooth. We're just going to smooth this out, and now that we've got this area done, let's go ahead and designate this as the meeting area. So we're going to go into Z for zones, and we're going to call this the, excuse me, what is this? This is the meeting area. I am going to go over these descriptions a little bit because I think this is quite a nice thing that they added to the Steam version. Um, this important zone where your citizens will gather to socialize crucially, the meeting area is where locations such as taverns, temples, hospitals, and the like are established. Um, I, I know that it's pretty much good to do this or I, I think it's pretty much good to do this just in your entrance hall after we get started. Um, there's like a lot more advanced room um, and like area designations. We're not going to get too much into that because, or we'll get into that like a half hour from now maybe. But yeah, let's go ahead and accept that. It's a 49 seven by seven meeting area. Is it seven by seven? Good enough. Anyway, one thing that I like is that you can actually click into the area just by going into the zones menu and then clicking on it, which is Honestly, quite amazing. Um, do the female dwarf sprites have beards? I've not actually noticed that. I could have sworn we had some women without beards, but there may very well be women with beards. I'm not entirely certain. I don't know that, that much about the deep lore. Um, I know 
more about like the classifications and stuff like that. But yeah, I I don't I simply don't know. Maybe someone in chat will know. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and build our first farm. So let's go ahead and make some rooms for farms. I don't really know why I did it like this. This looks a little weird, but I want to do like five by five rooms. Um, question to chat: If I leave it open to the elements, can they freeze to death in the winter? Because I don't know about the th way that thermodynamics work in these rooms. Um, I don't ever remember it being a problem, but then again, I've like lost all of my seeds. I can put doors onto these things, but um, apparently there's a mod to give them beards. There's already been a bunch of mods in it. Um, amazing. As long as they're inside, they'll be fine. Great. So we're just going to be doing this with plump helmets. I think we'll hopefully still get loamy sand floor here. Let's go ahead and put one in the central area too. So we're going to go into B for build and then this is technically under workshops if we want farms and I keep forgetting that workshop starts with the letter O the way that the steam version has been working and we're gonna go into farm again I could just be clicking in but it is kind of efficient once you've memorized some of them and we're gonna do P for farm plot okay so we're going to put out a farm plot here a farm plot underground amazing right but your dwarves eat mushrooms um, or rather they they need mushrooms to make plump helmet Beer? It, don't they make beer out of mushroom? What is this amazing brewing technique? Like, I would like to try this mushroom beer. That sounds pretty good once, but then after that, I would probably not have more of it. Like, my friends, um, my friends and I drink at this really cool deli where they have like all these flavored beers all the time, and it's just like, it's, it's a neat place to drink because you just get a can of anything. However, one of them is pickle flavored, and like, once is enough for a pickle flavored beer. Although it is kind of a cool novelty. Anyway, so we're actually going to be making farm plots here. And I'm just going to make more than we really need. So that if we want to, I don't know, replant or something like that, we can do this. And I'm liking having two of these people mining. That is quite good. Um, let's just wait a second. The um, And now I'm about to ask Chad another question. So get ready for Dwarf Fortress farming people. Okay, I had... The worst thing that you could do is run out of plump helmets. See, it's like you're just... Like, just don't let that happen. Or if that happens to you, just restart your fort. Like, they're going to die if you don't figure out how to do it. Um, yes, beer-flavored beer pickles. Maybe not as good as pickle-flavored beer, to be honest. Um, so we're going to go in here. We're just going to click on one of our farm plots. And right now we're in spring. Um, I haven't seen the information on the growing seasons of Plump Helmets. I want to keep it to just one field. I think we might run out of space here, but I tried doing more, and even though that I was just brewing my Plump Helmets, something kept going awry. I will tell you this, if you... Like, the goal is to get crop toner, turnover occurring, and you need the Plump Helmet seeds in order to begin. I think we're, we'll go into our stocks right here for a second, so let's look at our stocks. And the reason why we're getting tildes around our stocks is because we don't have a bookkeeper yet, and we don't have precise count of how many things we have. That's an office we can fill later, but for right now, we're trying to get... Do we have Plump Helmet seeds? I think this is just under seeds, yeah. Seeds, about 30, and we have dimple cup spawn we have plump helmet spawn so we have five plump helmet seeds um or spawns is there a difference between spawn and seed yeah so you don't want to cook the plump helmet seeds so make sure that you don't do a lot of cooking in the kitchen to begin with you got to put them into a brewer i'm sorry into a still where they'll brew them and then they'll get out the seeds and they'll make them into uh plump helmet plump helmet beer or whatever it is pickle flavored beer <laughs> Mushrooms don't have seeds, they have spores. Honestly, based comment, my mycology is off. Uh, how can, I'm just so horribly embarrassed about you guys knowing about that. Okay, do plum pellets have a, seed, a season that they don't grow? Because, I mean, they grow underground, right? Um, we don't have the cavern floor soil. So they've already planted five. So five of them are going over and they're putting them into the ground. Um, we won't actually see these show up. It was a little disappointing to me that you don't, like, see the little plot. Unless if I'm not seeing this right. I'm just gonna pause for a second. Yeah, like, these soil floors, like, I know you can't really see them, but it would be nice if there were some way of seeing that the seeds were planted there. Um, plump helmets are year-round. So, I think we'll just designate year-round plump helmets. And we want to make sure that these things get out of the ground when they're, when they're done growing. Uh, because we don't want them to rot, because then... I fear that we may lose the seeds. This did happen to me. 
and we pretty much just have to restart. Do we have a reindeer with us? I've also not really looked at our pets and livestock. That is a reindeer bull. Wow. Very exciting. Let's follow it around for a second. Oh my gosh, so majestic. Uh, if things blink into and out of existence, then they are sharing a square with something else. So that happens. A lot of first time people to the stream. Hey, thank you guys very much for uh, for coming out. Hey, Vorm, thanks for the raid. I'm just gonna give Vorm a really quick shout out. We're, Vorm, we're learning some Dwarf Fortress. I know, uh, <laughs> I know this is, uh, this is this is a new one to pick up, <laughs> but we're like we're going we're going in for it. I hope you had a good stream, man. What like a good person to be raided by right now, guys? Please be sure to go check out Vorm. Vorm does like, uh, in addition, I guess CDDA is what he's mainly known for. But while we're on a game like Dwarf Fortress, like it it definitely bears mentioning because Vorm like Nukrium is one of those people like I just genuinely enjoy watching and learned a lot from too and like you can really get into deep games like this if you check him out so definitely go give him a look uh, i hope you're doing well brother anyway um segue amazing segue we're gonna go in here so we've got the um we've got the meeting hall and we've got um we've got our stairway down i'm gonna leave our farm plot area separate because i don't want this to interfere with our future defenses and now we've dug down we're a few layers down into the earth, and we could keep going down, but we won't go too far down because then we might actually stumble upon a cavern or, like, dig into lava or something like that. And I'm just simply not ready for that right now. It's really cool if you find it, but I'm not going to do it right now for somewhat obvious reasons. I don't know if I'm going to need anything else in terms of, like, future defenses, so I'm just going to leave one floor totally blank. And a little bit, like, shame on me for that. Eh, actually, you know what? Nah, I'm probably gonna die anyway. Let's just go ahead and, like, mine out this area around us. And we're going to make this floor a sprawling place for our stockpiles, because I figure most of the time the dwarves are going to be bringing things in from outside and whatnot, so let's just make a really large area. I'm gonna be kind of ambitious here, and I want to be a bit of an architect, so let's just... The one thing I regret is I can't perfectly count these things out. Like, I know that that's not perfectly symmetrical, but that kind of bothers me, doesn't it? Because Dwarf Fortress is such a squarey game, and I really do love squares. I think that the best thinking is done on graph paper, so a little bit, like, can we get a nice, maybe like a little counting? Probably someone will make a mod for it. Um, alas. Anyway, let's go ahead in here, and let's do some more mining. Uh, we are going to do, whoops, more mine, mine out. You probably can't see me going for this UI. Maybe I should be hitting it more, but I'm just using the hotkeys. So, I don't know. Follow along with your hotkeys if you're learning, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and make... Hmm, how will I engineer this amazing building? Let's go ahead and do this. I want it to look square. full. Yes. Hey, Might Night Taco, hold that. Hope you're doing well. Hey, thank you very much for the sub. My heart, too, is square. They were going to try to operate on it, unfortunately, but... Um, I, I don't really know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's go ahead in here and let's make some amazingly shaped stockpile. I don't want everything to be perfectly square because it's kind of boring and I don't know, I was watching other streamers who did stuff that weren't per things that weren't perfectly square and I was like, that's that's perfectly not square and that's amazing. Um, so we'll, <laughs> we'll go ahead and leave it like that. Uh, we'll do this. And this is kind of a cool looking area for stockpile. This way we get like some area around it and there's some, ooh, I like this, okay. I like where this is going. Let's have like entrances over here to each of these stockpile rooms and this is exciting. Isn't this very exciting? You can't believe how excited you are that we're doing this. I can't believe how excited I am that we're playing Dwarf Fortress finally after so many years. Okay, let's do it like this. Do, do you guys kind of see the pattern of symmetry I'm going for? I personally think it's beautiful. Perhaps one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Anyway, we're going to use this floor to do like various stockpile designations. So we're going to have tons and tons of stone and wood and stuff like that left over. So I just know we're going to need space for it. Let's go ahead and mine out here and mine out here. And good, I think that's fairly symmetrical. A lot more natural shaping could try digging out a vein of rock ore and build a shape from there. That would be kind of neat. I mean, honestly, I like this before I was just like square 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 and there were these long hallways which were kind of boring so i like this this is at least okay you are asleep right now um i should probably be getting on with it so <laughs> uh, hang on a second everyone is asleep right now 
It's not really a very clear indication of whether it's day or night. Is there such a thing as day or night in Dwarf Fortress? I don't honestly know. <laughs> like, I'm going to ask some extremely obvious questions throughout this stream. Like, I don't know where to see my dwarf skills. I remember where to see it in Dwarf Therapist, but I don't know how to see it in this game. Um, Yo, I still haven't Zach, found it, honestly. I'm gonna go get it right now. <laughs> Enjoy the game, brother. Can we see this? Hey, C hey, Simo, what's up, brother? How you doing? <laughs> hey, thanks for the five bucks, man. Jeez. Also, good talk the other day. Thank you for the good information. I was just chatting with Simo the other day. I hope you're doing well, and congratulations on the good news, my friend. That's really special. Bottom right corner off a little bit. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Open the squad sidebar. Here we go. Uh, actually, this is getting into military. This is world. Um, is it under units? No, I just simply can't find it right now. I don't really want to belabor finding too many things I can't find yet. Again, in you know an hour from now, we will struggle more, but I want to keep it. I want to get to the list of the end of the things that I know for new players a little bit. Oh, we could go to the magnifying glass then skills. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, so this is actually quite interesting. So, huh. All the skills are considered qualitative in this game? I do remember in Dwarf Therapist, we had like a... Wasn't it a set of numbered skills that we had? I mean, you do have overview, so these are technically like their things. Or is dabbling an indica... Is that like a, a qualitative term, which is actually a quantity? Like he is two out of three in his skill or something like that? Is that... Am I wrong in saying that? Then labor for job selection. Labor, labor, labor. Oh. Steam version. Unmet need eat meal demands. Yes, yes, yes. That is true. Dwarf Therapist is like a module that was in Dwarf Fortress Legacy. Um, it's still very useful. It's still 1 to 15. Okay, so like dabbling is actually a term that indicates a number of the skill. That's... Uh, you know, again, I'm dabbling through don't take everything I say as gospel truth, unless if it really sounds like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm still kind of like, you know, um, scratching scratching at the understanding of it here, too. Okay, so we've got all this. I wanted to just make time for our dwarves to do things. Is everyone starving to death yet? And you admire art, craft object, be with family, pray. Okay, no, so they're not starving to death yet. Let's just go ahead and make sure. This is kind of where we go back to that um, Rimworld, like, eight without table kind of stuff going on. Can we go to the next dwarf? I don't really see the tool for that, so let's just go back into our menu. Craft objects. I just want to make sure that nobody's starving to death. Like, these are higher needs on the, you know, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, so let's just leave it there. Let's go. No, the ma there isn't actually a formal system for Maslow's hierarchy of needs, as far as I know in this game. However, there may be, and I just haven't yet discovered it. Um, let's go ahead and just put all down here for now. I know this is probably going to be a horrible idea, because I don't want miasma spreading through. In fact, eh, yeah, I'll do one all area. It hasn't killed me yet, so I'm just going to keep doing it. And let's have this, like, we won't have it perfectly over the whole thing, but we're just going to have most of this room be a stockpile. Actually? Can I repaint with a right click to undo? Oh, that's this is actually not a bad question. How do I... Um, delete part of the stockpile. Do we just have to delete the entire thing? Or there's probably a way to paint what I don't want. Whatever. I'm just going to make it... I want to make it square because I want it to look good. We'll do more later. That's fine. We'll have stockpiles here. Mouse scroll, mouse scroll. How do I, what's the hot key to visually move down a layer? It used to be less than or greater than. Uh, you have to check the key bindings. For right now, I'm just using my mouse scroll wheel. Control and scroll is zoom in and out, yeah. Again, I don't want to go too much over controls here. Because um, a lot of that, you can just kind of like look through it. It is very customizable. I like that about the Steam version that they've done. Um, why is everyone not putting the stuff away? People, come on, let's go. Let's do some stuff. Hmm... What have I done wrong here? Did I designate this as all? Oh, no, this is designated as none. Whoops-a-daisy. Whoops-a-daisy. Now they should start bringing things down. Yep, there they go. They've gone off to the wagon. Have they gone off to the wagon? Wherever they are. Stuff is being done. It's sometimes... The one thing I will say is that... And I, I know that it 
I, I like that there's not too many time controls because I think that might be a bit obnoxious, but sometimes it is hard to tell just based on movement whether time is on or off. And I know that's like very Dwarf Fortressy, but maybe it's something that... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I it's it's hard to like... I would never, ever expect Dwarf Fortress to become less accessible because I think that this game thrives in its inaccessibility. <laughs> like... <laughs> and I don't really mean that. Of, oh, our plump helmets have grown up. This is amazing, except we're not uh, ready for them at all. So I'm going to have to procrastinate very hard to get this next part uh, done. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Um, I'm not honestly sure if I can move these workshops. So let's just get to work on this right now. I'm going to cancel a lot of our other building orders. Let's just go ahead over here. And like I will designate these again in a moment. But I right now just want to kind of get this done. Um, okay, let's just designate this because I'm not honestly sure if you can go through diagonals and that is kind of freaking me out. Let's do that. Okay, good. So now I just want our minor dwarves to go on here because on the next floor I'm planning on putting all of our workshops. So as for our workshops, let's do M for mine. Let's give them a little bit of a buffer area here. Um, whoops, that was piles. Okay, let's do that. And we're going to do another hallway. Let's go down to the right this time. And I think this will be more like a proper room. Let's go ahead and do um, M here. Setting dig priors. So, I mean, most of this stuff, I know that I'm like being a little bit painting with a hatchet right here. But just, there are probably better ways to do many of the things that I'm doing. I just don't want to be sitting here for like 40 minutes and learn how to do them in a better way. I'm just going to do them in kind of the rough and easy way. But that I, I do appreciate you telling me that there is a better way to do it, Joaka. Thank you very much. Honestly, like, 45 minutes to an hour from now. I'm starting to learn that actually the extent of my knowledge about this game, like, goes further than I thought. Although, I'm not really doing a lot of the power user controls, like, so keep that in mind. Okay, one thing that I have messed up immediately and I'm beginning to see is my animals are... And this was actually quite a stupid thing that I did. Um, yeah, I did not pasture my animals. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Um, let's make a spot, I guess, like on the bottom of the mountain. I do believe that this transfers over Z levels, if I'm not mistaken. I guess we want it to be like an area with some plantings, but is there anywhere I would want to pasture my animals? Maybe up here looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Um, you can always hit F1 to get back to your wagon. You can designate other areas to, like, quick. Since there's so much scrolling around like this, now that, you know, to get, just to get to whatever level I want to on my fort, there are hotkeys where you can designate various floors. They were done in a different way in the original, so I'm gonna have to, like, go back in and figure out how to do it. Either that or it is just sort of a complex um, hotkey designation to do. However, you can set your own macros in this, which I'm told you couldn't do in the original, um, which is quite amazing. Um, honestly, that is a big change. Okay, so whoops, this is under zone and pastures. Okay, we're going to go ahead over here and let's just make like a big, big pasture. This is going to be probably way too big, but it's 1,289 squares. And um, now we can go ahead and select all of our animals. So the dogs and the cats... I'm pretty sure can just stay in our meeting area, and that might be good because then they could keep out vermin, potentially. Um, or they tend to hang out there, but we don't want to force them into it because, I don't know, like we might have to boop them on the snoot or something like that, you know? Yeah, let's go ahead and just do that. We'll um, leave it there. We don't need to confirm this in any way, right? Is this like Rimworld? Rimworld is like this, I'll say. <laughs> um, again, chat has my permission to uh, bonk anyone who comes into chat and says this game is a ripoff of Rimworld or something like that because, no, I make sure that everyone knows that uh, Dwarf Fortress is the granddaddy of them all. Um, yes, I, I would like that. But yes, I mean, if you like Rimworld, you'll, you will probably like Dwarf Fortress. Um, it just takes a little while to learn it. Okay, so now all of our happy animals have gone up into uh, the pasture up here. So hopefully they will do some grazing over here. I hope I'm doing this right because I'm really not too much of an animal uh, whisperer. Okay, so good. Our dogs are staying in the entrance. And the dogs are actually somewhat helpful for like... Isn't it if bad people come in, the dogs will kill them or something like that? I can't remember quite exactly. So they're putting everything in here. This is not really what I wanted. Um, 
are our minor dwarves doing this? No, our minor dwarves are actually right now doing hauling. Ooh, I don't really like that. Um, hmm. I don't really... Is there a quick way to set up work priority there so that they don't haul when they're supposed to do that? I need a rope and pole to make them dar guard dogs. Something I just simply don't know about yet. But thank you. Dogs chained near the entrance can spot stealth goblin and kobold. I didn't even know that there are stealth kobold snatchers. That's amazing. Um, okay, I, I don't know how to do this really quick, so we're just going to live with it. We're putting stones over there. We're putting everything else over there right now. There's a lot more I would like to do, but the main thing is that I want our miners to get onto this mining. So, please, sir, can you mine the hole? Give me a moment. Are they done putting them to pasture? They're done farming. They're done putting them to pasture. Maybe I should go and follow along with one of our miners. Oh, there they go. Amazing that you've decided to do your job. <laughs> You were just sitting there unemployed for the entire time. I'm just going to get angry at the game when it's not doing what I don't understand what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to be... Uh, here we go. I, I'm like, I'm kind of procrastinating at this point just because it's a little hard to tell how much time is going by. We started off at some part of spring. Now we're at late spring, which clearly late spring is the end of the spring. And we're going to be going to do... Uh, let's do workshops, then farming, then... Uh, still. I'm thinking that I'm going to want it here. There we go. We'll make it out of dolomite. I don't want to use up too many of my logs because, well, we just have so much more, like, uh, stone than logs. I mean, ult or ultimately we will, even if it doesn't look like it right now. Uh, set priorities by task by pressing M and then N to open up the advanced options. Yes. If anyone gives me a tip, I thank you very much for doing it that way, too. Oh, that is quite nice. That is based on the tiles. Is there a way that I can do it in the rimworldy way? Or is it only designating via task? That is quite a useful thing to know. Also, too, if you have, like, a tip for me in this game, um, only because I like to keep a very clean thread while I'm doing this, because I know that if I go off my kind of what I know in the game, I'm going to go awry. Please put it, please highlight me in the comment, just like, thank you Turbaja, I really do appreciate that. Please ping me in your name, and then like, put the entire tip into one very concise statement. <laughs> if you are good at, if you are good at Dwarf Fortress and you are feeling charitable, I very much appreciate that, thank you. Um, although many of them like, I will just probably uh, intentionally ignore, only because I might not be ready for it yet at times. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do a carpenter here as well. I'm going to make that out of dolomite, and I may need to mine out more rock. Um, I'm trying to think of a game where this is like... There are... If this is like Dwarf Fortress Legacy, then there are designated squares where they can, like, stand and work in the tile. And I don't want to make this inaccessible, so I'm just going to put a little bit of space between each of my workshops. I might even just space out every single tile around them, because I'm like, are they able to walk through here? It looks like that they can, and I might be a bit... Uh, too careful about this, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, let me see. I guess for everybody else in chat, um, uh, well, I, I don't know. If you, if you have no idea what you're talking about, I'll probably just ignore you and be like, I hope someone else answers it. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. I, I do, I do love you, though. I do love, I love you very much. Anyway, um, so here we've got our two workshops, and this is what I was kind of in a frenzy to do. We don't have a manager yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a new task here. We're going to make a barrel, uh, and we need barrels. Let's go ahead and... Is there a way to just repeat this a bunch of times? I know if I had the manager, I could do it like 10 times. That would be great, but I just want to make like... Let's just make two barrels, and then we'll do the manager. I just want to do work priorities first. We don't want them to do this forever. We just want to do it like that. And they will store the barrels here. This is like... The whole place is made of dolomite, so it says that there's some dolomite down here. We've got the workers um, free for anybody to use. We want it to be like that. We're going to start to set up offices in a moment, but not now. <laughs> um, uh, then we will also tell them to uh, brew 
no, extract plants. Repo requires empty food storage items. So we can't designate the brew drink from plant yet because we don't have barrels, because we aren't keeping things in barrels. So we need to make the barrels before we do anything else. So let's go back upstairs. And it looks like somebody should be going to the wagon. Good, so we're making the barrel now. Who is this, Irvad? It seems like Irvad and Gizados is doing everything around here, so that is a little bit troubling. However, like, he's just such a unit, so let's leave him to do that. Um, we should probably assign somebody else to do some mining, too, if he's doing that. Well, it does appear as if we have a barrel now. Is it in our storage yet? It might not be accounted for in our storage. Okay, it does look like, oh, here we go. Uh, barrel, oaken, Are this is actually a full barrel? pigtail bag. We do have some bags. Dwarven rum barrel, Ashen, so this is some of their rum. We do have about 40 drink left. Can we do this yet? No. Okay, then let's just go back upstairs and let's keep working on our stockpiles then in that case. So I'm just going to keep on making these things much, much bigger because, well, we're going to need it for a while. Uh, I would like to designate out, like, special places for each of these things, but at right now I'm just kind of, like, I'm limited a little bit by our all the work we have to do with our dwarves. So let's go ahead over here. We'll just keep mining out these areas. Um, 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 very exciting. And I think that this is symmetrical. Are you symmetrical? Not perfectly much so. Whoops, it looks like I just needed to do more over there. Uh, five by five. Okay, there we go. Symmetrical enough, symmetrical enough. That does kind of bother me because I feel like that it should look like Casa Doom when I'm done with it, you know? Uh, don't you like the way I say Casa Doom? <laughs> uh, no, I, I can't really do dwarf talk very well. I think it's because I'm actually like a very thin person in real life, and I, I've always felt like I wasn't really at home among the dwarves. I like them, and I admire their way of life, but at the same time, it's just I didn't really feel like... Uh, I didn't really... F I feel like that they would just tolerate my presence. Were I in there um, among them, you know? <laughs> I almost just said among us again. There I go. Wow. It continues to this day. All right, let's go ahead and make more stockpile zones. More and more stockpiles. We're just going to need so many of them, so we might as well haul all of that crap down here. There we go. Good. Build my fort over an aquifer and make sure... Um, I'm afraid if the water will come into the fort. Hmm. I mean, like, I'm, I'm hoping that we all drown, though, too. I'm hoping just it's an exciting death. Like, everyone starves to death wouldn't be very exciting. But, like, everyone drowns in a massive pool of lava because I've messed up. But, like, that would be way more awesome. Um, but I'm just hoping it happens after another, like, 45 minutes or so when we at least have some idea of what's going on around us. <laughs> Here we go. Let's just make this area bigger. I'm apologizing. Now I just have to make this. Uh, here we go. View stockpile. There we go. And that. And let's make it even bigger over here. Good. Except. So we d I just want to make sure that we have plenty of room for all of this stuff. Let's view the stockpile. And... I will say this, you know, I'm, I'm not comparing too many things to RimWorld, but I think I think Tynan really mastered the UI when he made RimWorld, and like, although that it was made after Dwarf Fortress, I do think it was like more accessible, but I expect Dwarf Fortress to be one of those games that like, kind of turns into another, shall we say, sensation. Um, although I, I really do like what Tynan did with the UI in RimWorld, and I think like, you know, it, it was based on Dwarf Fortress in many ways, but, like, I also think it just displayed extreme innovation, what they did there at Ludeon, um, Tynan and his, his amazing team. So, like, uh, you know, like, although I said that before, like, you know, make sure that everyone knows, like, that Dwarf Fortress inspired RimWorld. Like, also, too, like, th that is not to say that, like, you know, one is better than the other or compare them in any way. Like, both amazing, and I just like to posit that out there um, to show that I am not an ignorant swine. Uh, speaking of which, should we make pigtails next? We've got brew drink from plant, and now I think I am actually going to designate... Uh, we didn't think this would even happen yet, but let's have a manager. So we are going to need, I guess a broker and a manager would be the two offices that I really have some idea of what's going on with them. So let's go ahead and just do that. Uh, we are going to need an office for them. I'm getting carpentry workshop, but we've got that. Yep. 
Um, door, two doors for the entrance, a good idea. Buckets and a bunch of barrels for storing the stacking. Probably a good idea, Chili Dog Dave. We should do that next, but right now I want to make sure that I can get out those work designations the way I want them. Let's go ahead and have a manager, and everyone sucks. So we're just going to have Ezim Onolalis, the stone crafter, doing it, because I really don't know who would make for the best here. Bim Rekagam. Rekag, ma'am, is already our expedition leader. It's always the damn expedition leader who do this. Or we could have mm, maybe Kumil Kadol dim, Dan, man. Trasbute, uh, whatever it is. Tres, Trasbandetran, man. I can't say it. He needs an office, so that's red. Um, and a bookkeeper. Oh, sorry, I meant to say bookkeeper, not broker. I have no idea what I'm doing there, so. Okay, Dumat Dakash... Dama Dakos Sakrith. The planter is pretty good at that, so we'll do that. Um, highest precision your bookkeeper needs to work in an. Uh, highest precision amount to all accounts. Which one is the higher precision? Is one or five a higher precision? Lowest precision stocks to mount to display 78. Seven. Oh. Okay, so this is showing like rounding, I suppose? Your bookkeeper needs to... Okay, I don't really know what the... Mm, bookkeeper... Oh, wait, what changes here? Highest precision, highest precision. All counts accurate. Okay, so this makes sure that I suppose that the bookkeeper will spend a lot of time getting the precision of this down. But yes, we, uh, we should probably want to know how much of the things we have. Okay, in Dwarf Fortress, it doesn't just tell you the resource counts that you have. You need a bookkeeper to actually do the counting for you. You can have your bookkeeper be more or less precise, so that's what I'm trying to handle with this right now. I suppose that this is like rounding, so it will round by a factor of... You know... I'm trying to think of how to describe this in terms of like significant figures. I, I'm not going to get into this. They'll round more if you pick one. They'll try to be really accurate if you pick five. I don't think that this is going to be too much. Yes, it's an approximation. Um, so let's go ahead and just make it as accurate as possible because I, I don't know. I mean, like if you have a bigger, much bigger fort with huge stockpiles, I imagine that's more useful to you because some forts can get enormous, but I don't really want to do that right now. Okay, let's go ahead and have some doors. Um, we will make 10, and I'm going to go ahead in here, and I don't know if these orders are carrying over from save file to save file. Maybe I just did something wrong the other day. Mine, I think, w maybe I did something wrong. Anyway, we want to make sure that they always have at least 10 doors, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, eh, maybe 10. We'll need them for now, though, so we might as well make them, and it's not a huge waste of time, so let's just go ahead and do that. They're always going to have 10 wooden doors, and again, I needed to go into this symbol to do that. Um, I think at least I'm doing that right. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have that with brewing too. Or could we just do brewing forever? Now, I did run out of seeds when I did things this way. We've got some plump helmet spawns in here, but I want chat, please stop me if I'm doing something horribly awry. If I just say brew drink from plant forever. Am I going to get myself killed if I do this? Otherwise, I'm just going to continue doing this my way. I <laughs> there will be a couple more moments in in stream when I will just like do something in a horrible way and be like hmm did that is this what caused my entire fort to get destroyed brew seeds gives them back yeah so again we it's okay to brew them all the time I think but like um um is extracting from plant going to do more you will run out of barrels fair honestly so maybe we should just do let's go ahead and x out of that let's do it as a work order then I suppose and let's do Repeat until cancelled because of no resource, either barrels or food. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, is it bad if we run out of them? I, su I suppose we might want some for, like, you know, cooking later on. Um, but my, my main worry is, what if they just rot? Now we have a bookkeeper. Now we do. Um, I guess let's just say, like, if I just harvest a bunch of plants from the surface with button three, get a bunch of random seeds to boot. What is button three? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, it sounds good. Let's go ahead and brew drinks from plants. Let's just set it to like an amount that is quite high though. Um, amount of unrotten fermentable plants. Oh, that's interesting. Um, empty food storage items, seeds, amount of drinks. So if we have amount of seeds available is less than 10, no. 
Oh, the third button at the bottom. Thank you. Ah, uh, I think I see what you mean. Ing. You could just gather the plants if they're... I hadn't really thought of that. Let's just say if they don't have... Let's make it quite a high number of drinks. Now, I don't know how long it takes them to consume a drink, but is 25 a bad number here? Let's just say 25. Let's do that. Now I'm starting to learn a, a little bit. I hope that you'll enjoy me bumbling through because we're going to start to do more of that because I really want to make sure that I've mastered this system. I mean, I could have just gone in there and said brew them forever, but here, I mean, you know, I want to make sure that we have at least some seeds for a while because even when I was brewing our seeds forever, like, you know, they were extracting out the seeds and yet somehow I still ran out of seeds. So there will be a lot of moments like that in room in, uh, I keep saying room world, in Dwarf Fortress. Um, but, you know, it just... It, don't be cowardly like just <laughs> confidently make mistakes i guess that is to say we're gonna brew drinks from plants there so we'll do 20 wait a minute didn't i just say 25 i swear to god didn't i just say 25 yeah i just said 25 they're available is less than 25 so then why does it say 10 over there brew drink from plant 10 out of 10 maybe i need to give it a moment change the number of times the task will be performed hmm. 25 Good enough for me. Okay. I'm probably doing not fully understanding it right there. It makes 10 if there's less than 25. 25 is the condition. 10 is the amount to be made. Oh, God. 10 is the work I'm going to... There's something subtle I'm not fully understanding there. I just set everything to the higher number. 25. Wait a second. Let me see if I fully... Mm. It would be nice if when I hovered over that, that actually showed me what was happening. That, that's one thing that I like that they've added to the um, not satisfied for next check. Good. I think we're good then. Yeah, it would be nice if there were like a little bit of a clearer explanation of like this. One thing I will say, um, I think Paradox did a really good job in making Crusader Kings more accessible in CK3 when you had to hover over menus and you could go into anything. I think all games should do that in the future because, oh my god, I fully understand Crusader Kings 3 because of Paradox's amazing way of doing in-game tutorials. I thought they did a really good job with that and I think... I'm not sure if RimWorld does that, but I feel like that it could even still. Um, just such like a brilliant way to kind of put a wiki into a game for making it as like as accessible as people want it to. Quite amazing, quite amazing. Let's go ahead and put a door in front of our fort though, because currently it's just open. Let's go ahead and do B, and we're then going to do furniture. So one thing that you might have noticed if you have tried at any point before this is if you try to designate a door uh, and you haven't made a door in your craft workshop, you can't get a door because you don't have a door. So you've got to go ahead and build the door first, and then you can put up the door, which is quite amazing and very exciting. Um, let's go ahead and just make this because I'm going to just make a long line of stuff for my workshops just because uh, there's going to be a more efficient way to do this, but I won't know it. So let's just do things sort of in the order in which... We're confronting them. So we're starting off with a still and a carpentry workshop. After this, we might get like a mason's workshop just so that we can start working with stone. We can make thrones, stuff like that. But let's go ahead and B. And then we're going to do f uh, doors, which of course start with P. Uh, and then we'll put another door right there. And let's put this over here so that if anyone comes in like surprised Pikachu face, we're being invaded. Very exciting. Let's go ahead and do B. And another thing I'm going to go ahead and say here is you can keep you can tick this. I think it used to be the shift button you would press, but I didn't notice that working for me. Or maybe I'm just misremembering. There was a... I feel like there was a different way to do it. Or maybe I'm just misremembering again. Alas, whatever it is. Let's have two doors because, you know, two doors are better than one. And then we're going to go deeper down now. Um, have we counted everything up? We don't actually have an office for anyone, so I want to do that too. We've got our storage area. I've pretty much just designated all at these areas. Let's go ahead and do, we've got wood. We've got like the little stockpile name here. This is a picture of wood. If you've never seen wood, that is wood. Um, we've got all here and we've got stone here. So let's go ahead and say, we don't want refuse here. Let's do... Mm, is there anything else that we're going to have a lot of? I would like to see how much food we have. Uh, I would also like to see how much furniture we have as well. So I may start to divvy this up a bit more. But let's just put food in there because I think it would be nice to see that visually. 
Or you can also do like strips or lines of things. I don't know, get creative with your stockpiles. Like I'm just being a little bit slipshod here or what is it, what is the right word for it? Um, let's go down another level. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do is mine out and we shall designate some bedrooms for them. See food stocks at the top. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to go ahead and do like another line here. There's some amazing ways that people can create like Casa Doom with their bedrooms. I really like to say Casa Doom. Uh, let's go ahead and do... I'm thinking of how I want to do this. So let's have an area for our like pleb dwarves and then dwarves, our dwarves. And then an area for our dwarves who belong in an office. So I think I'm going to make the offices three by three. I think that's a nice size for an office. You could have very small bedrooms though if you want. I just think it looks nice. The d rooms don't need to be anywhere near as big as they do in RimWorld, like RimWorld. Cause I'm guessing most people who are playing this right now enjoy playing RimWorld. And I think that's like a very good reference here to go off of, but there's very radically different space requirements in Dwarf Fortress as far as I understand it. Um, and then we'll make, so those rooms were like kind of lo uh, horizontal ways. Now we're gonna make rooms that are like kind of long ways. And I think we'll make two by three rooms for our dwarves over here. I'm pretty sure that a bedroom can be like a one by one with just a bed in it, which is actually quite like terrifying. Uh, if you are claustrophobic, but I think we'll do other bedrooms over here and I think I want them to work on the offices first. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I do believe that there's a way to blueprint. Whoops, but I don't remember it and I'm not, I don't want to get into more advanced controls before we've mastered the basics. Um, let's go ahead and let's just do those offices first. Here we go, M, we'll just mine out that, whoops, M. So I just have to do one square. Okay, and let's watch our dwarves as they come further down the mountain and get further into danger. <laughs> um, uh, how do we deconstruct the wagon again? There is a way to do it. I have like looked toward it with great trepidation <laughs> and fear. We do have an anvil in there, which is quite nice. But we should probably be putting it somewhere else. Control and R record. Control and P play. Ah, that is helpful. The button next to the feather. Oh, where was the feather again? Was it with M? Somewhere. Okay, I should probably take notice of some of our events that have happened. That is helpful. Thank you. At the top right corner. Oh, okay. Um, again, I have lost... <laughs> I, I keep thinking I remember I'm seeing parts of the UI. Uh, forgive me. Um, okay. Left click for recenter and expand options. Right click to dismiss. So we have the weather clearing. We do have like some beautiful weather that takes place. Uh, at least even in the old tile set versions, it was quite beautiful, I thought. But, um, here we go. They, I'm just making sure that they're gathering these things up. So where do these things go? So you go down, Mr. Blue Shirt, and you go down here. They're not really storing away the f well, they're not fully done with the stockpiles yet. Okay, I don't really need you doing this right now, so let's go ahead and just undesignate most of this mining. I really want you to just go ahead and work on the bedrooms next. So good. So we're getting deeper into the mountain, and now we're going to start getting ready offices. So I guess I'll just do a little bit of an overview here. Rooms aren't like automatically designated just because you make them. You actually need to build the thing up, and then you go into zones, and then you can make a room. And this is like a designated area where something will happen. Maybe it's like someone's office, maybe it's someone's bedroom, maybe it's a dining area, maybe it's a throne room, maybe it's a meeting room, whatever it is. Um, and, okay, good, they're working on that. So as they work on these things, we wanna try to kind of separate them out. I've seen that there's some like kind of picky requirements at times here, so just, again, Think of it a little bit like, I suppose, coding. And remember, you need to actually have the item first. So I'm gonna go ahead preemptively into my workshop. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add another order. Let's say beds. Uh, whoops, it's right there at the top. Make beds. Uh, this is a one-time order. I wanna make sure that we always have some beds lying around though. If you toggle advanced orders, I can set work priority. We'll get a little bit more into that for later on, I guess. Thank you for helping me with it though. But I just want to make sure that we have the things out. I'm going to go through things just like at my own pace right here. Um, 
rather than having a bunch of incomplete orders that are like not finished that I don't know what to do with them. Let's go ahead into doors and hatches and add more doors over here. We've kept it after placement because we're about to place a bunch of them. So I think it's a good idea to have this around. Um, we do need to kind of keep selecting the materials. I'm just going to click whatever's at the top. Maybe there's a best material. I honestly don't know. Um, like if you want to do it all be birch or whatever it was. So good, our door, our do our doors are bringing in, bringing in the doors. Uh, I've been talking for a while. Let me get a sip of water. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and designate out some rooms. So I'm going to call this a bedroom, uh, and let's just do this three by three right here. I don't think that we need to designate the doors themselves, though that does make it ten. I personally don't see the difference, but maybe there is one. Either way, I'm just going to do that for right now. And we could assign a dwarf to it. We will we'll probably do this for our... Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that at all. I didn't mean to do that at all. Remove this zone permanently. This bedroom should be back here. There we go. Accept. And I'm going to make this for our bookkeeper. Let's just do this in a nice... Or uh, we'll do this for our manager. Kumil Kadoldan, man. That's such a great name. Uh, yeah. Kudol Cad, whatever his name is. Um, we love you, Kudol. Uh, we're going to put another bed <laughs> another bedroom back here, and this is going to be the one for our expedition leader. I think we'll go expedition leader, manager, then bookkeeper. So we'll go assign this. We don't need to assign it, and it could just be for like somebody, or we could have done a, a um a dormitory. But I think let's give everybody their own individual bedrooms. This is important because we will be getting more migrant dwarves later, and there's going to be a bunch at once. So your fortress just like if you run out of dwarves, don't get so worried because there will be more. <laughs> like they they come along. You have more people than you do in Rimworld. Um. Oh, really? You can do, like, the whole bunch of them at once? Well, let's try that. Let's see if we do multi before placing the bedroom. You can select a whole row of rooms. Useful. I mean, keep in mind, like, I'm doing things slowly. But just, yeah. Um, here we go. Office here. If we do another office. Oh, so if we do this. Ah, that's actually quite useful. I will try this one. Z, office. So if we select multi, select your rectangle which contains chairs in order to perform thrum. So let's see if we just do that. Clearly I'm doing something wrong here. Um, yeah, I'm just not that much of a power user yet. That's helpful, but I think I'm just like, I need to place the furniture first, it seems, or I'm just doing something slightly wrong. I'm not, I don't want to get like too caught up in these little inconsistencies though, so I'm just going to keep kind of like keep muddling through. Uh, again, for now, like my own way a little bit, but uh, yeah, I, I enjoy anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and put down some peach bed uh, frame areas. So they'll put these beds in, and you're upset. Please stop being upset because no one's allowed to be upset yet. Uh, okay, here we go. Dolomite cavern floor. So we've got beds in their bedrooms, and that's amazing. And are you in your own? No, you're the fisher dwarf, so you just place that there. Um, you are, in fact, the expedition leader, but this isn't your bedroom. This is whose bedroom? Does it tell me right as I go in? Nope. I've got this. I can see that this Kumil Kadol Dan Man's room. And then this one is Bim Rega Regak, ma'am. There we go. So let's go ahead and make another office here. And we're going to not even have this one be multi. Let's just say that this one is here. There we go. Paint. Um, nope, I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look like this. There we go, accept. Um, and we will start to add in the requirements of an office. So let's do that. And accept. Good. Okay, so now we can make sure that the expedition leader has an office right outside of his bedroom, and that the bookkeeper, and yada yada yada. So let's have the expedition leader is outside of his room, and I think that's good. That's his office. So now we're going to have one for our, I think we said that our manager was the second one. Good. And we'll start to add in the requirements, but I also want to make sure that they're mining still. So let's have out a couple more offices, a couple more rooms. And then we're going to go up back uh, in the stairs and... Now we're going to start to make like tables and thrones and things like that. I will just ask frankly right now, is it better to have a throne than a chair? Because we pretty much just need them to have like a chair and a place to work at. So I think it's either a chair and a table or a chair and a throne. Throne. Is a throne or a chair better in this case? 
They're pretty much the same thing, thrones or chairs. Would you, I mean, I personally would prefer to sit on a wood chair rather than like a stone throne. Although that sounds nice, is it just an aesthetic thing? We'll start to work our way toward that, but like, you know, we won't trouble ourselves too much with that. Let's just give them some pleb chairs again. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead in here, and we want to make sure that we have a lot of chairs all the time, because we're going to need them for various things and crap. So let's go ahead, and we've got this work requirement. This is another thing. So we're going to go back in here, and let's make sure that if they have less than 10 thrones, I guess is throne like the catch-all word for chairs? Okay. Okay, Dwarf Fortress. You do you. Hopefully they'll start making the chairs slash thrones. Thrones are like made of stone, but chairs are made of wood. So if you're ever sitting, if you find yourself sitting on a stone chair, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and put in some more doors over here because we're going to need them. I've got this um, and this, and I don't even know whose office that will be, but we have quite a few more offices to do. Why are you just staring at him unhappily? Pray to Tobal, pray to craft object. She felt satisfied discussing her problems with a friend. I guess she's talking to Cole Abelmanam, animal caretaker, is currently talking to... Who was that that just left over there? That was Bim Rekakman. Less than three. Who was sleeping. It's just talking to him in his sleep. Dwarves do kind of strange, bizarre stuff. But it can sometimes be difficult to get a little bit of feedback as to what's going on. However, they do some bizarre stuff, I will say that. Also, anger management, thank you for the 500 bits. And also to everybody who's subbed so far. I've just been so much in, like, a dwarf mode that I've I've practically forgotten who I am. Here we are. We've got some more doors. That's excellent to be getting more doors. Let's just put dwar... Uh, dw Why do doors and dwarves sound to have to sound so similar? That is quite upsetting. I guess that this is good. Maybe... Maybe I'm going to put a door in front of our farms, just because who knows what's going to happen to the farms. I don't know. I like things to be separated off. Um, let's go ahead here. Down. Up so dwarves will complain. Yeah, we'll get a lot of complaints. Oh, maybe she was complaining to him. Maybe that was why she was feeling satisfied. Possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, I keep hitting W for workshops, but I forget that that moves me up. That's why that's happening. Let's go ahead and have um, crafts. I wanted to do more of like, a, not a soap maker's workshop. Is it a stone worker? Here we go. Make stone furniture here as well. Whoops. Uh, that is the bane of my existence. The number of sub menus is a lot. Dolomite, we will do that. I mean, this is normal for Dwarf Fortress, and honestly, to me, it's like, it's not that bad. But sometimes, like, if I accidentally right-click, it gets me out of every single menu, and I'm like, uh, oh no, how can people follow what I'm saying? Um, hmm. Corn. I just wanted to say corn. Uh, the one thing I was, I was thinking there was something that we need. What, what was it that we needed? I wanted to make thrones. It was, like, thrones I wanted to make. But also to bookcase, we can make that out of wood if we want. Slab, statue, we could make a statue. Let's just make statues, because why not? Very exciting. Let's make rock thrones. Sounds good. Like, we're going to have a very royal dining room, I've just decided. Rock thrones. There we go. That's where the rock sits. Dwayne. Very nice, very nice. I'm thinking also, too, like, this is just such a goddamn mess. Let's go ahead and start expanding out our stockpiles, because they've clearly already filled up the stone one. And we'll probably cause some sort of cave-in, but let's just do it. This is starting to remind me of my underground Rimworld fort, like, which is actually quite a beautiful place. So let's just continue along with that theme. Mine out more. Let's just do in, like, long strips like this, this way. Hither and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's have it be like that big. Maybe we'll cause a cave in. Wouldn't that be exciting? We'll go there. That's still definitely not going to be enough space for our rock. But I'm also starting to see that, look, we just have so much space that we need for wood as well. Um, though mainly rock. <laughs> mainly there's a lot of rocks in this game, if you haven't seen them yet. I guess we should make our all space larger as well, simply because 
well, it's holding all. And what I'm also remembering is we should probably have a refuse area. I'm just going to put this somewhere outside because I don't know if there's a better place to put this, but I don't want it inside because it could spread miasma. Like, if they put a corpse down there or something like that, we should prob- Oh yeah, we should have corpse zones and refuse areas. Or maybe we'll just put it on this flat plane below. Um, stone blocks would be good, but we'll get to that soon. Let's get the refuse out first. Just things that could cause everyone to die. I'm still sort of in that area right now. Um, I was thinking zone for a second, but this is actually a P. This is a stockpile because it's where something is stored. A zone is more just like where something happens, but like a stockpile is where things are put. So let's go ahead and do, is this refuse? So refuse there, you can go in and customize everything and there is quite a lot to customize. I will show you because just in terms of corpses, look at all the stuff that is in this game. There is every kind of animal. There are squir giant squirrel men. Look at the whole section that's just alphabetically dedicated to giant. Giant bats, giant badgers, giant bark scorpions, giant beavers, giant beetles, giant black bears. There's everything in this game. My favorite of them all was giant, where is it? Giant penguins. I didn't even know that was a thing. Squirrel, where is giant squirrel? Sperm whales, giant stoats. I could have sworn it was giant squirrel men. They're probably in the game, but I just can't find them right now. There's a lot in this game is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we've got a big area for refuse down here. Let's go ahead and X out of that. We'll do piles. We'll do another one right here. Let's go like this. We'll accept that. And then we'll do corpses here. I don't know why I made this one so astronomically large, but yeah, like it is what it is. And let's go ahead and see if our dwarves put some stuff down there. They probably won't because they're busy standing around. Um... And at the same time, while they're standing around, let's go and have them carve faces into the ground, because that's just such an exciting idea, isn't it? I really- this is my favorite new visual thing that I've seen. I saw this- I think I was rushing Rob as the other night, and he had all these faces in the ground, and I was like, we can do that now? So yes, once the stone is smoothed, we can carve faces into the ground. Isn't that exciting? Detailed dolomite floor. I think that looks really good. And I don't remember that from the old tile sets. So um, maybe I just haven't played enough and I don't know what's going on around me. Was that in the old tile sets that you could do that? I thought that was so cool. Let's have all the walls detailed with faces too. This is way too like royal to us. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah, they are kind of stepping on pictures of presumably their own faces, because I don't know el to, else th to whom else they would dedicate this area. But again, very exciting. Um, let's go ahead and expand out our stockpile zone. I like the little designations here. These are nice visuals that they've added to the game. Um, you didn't have, like, these little roped-off sections at all before. It was just like, yep, that's the stockpile. Or did you? Actually, I'm trying to recall. Did you? Maybe you did. I just haven't played Dwarf Fortress in years before this. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Anyway, going, venturing deeper underground, let's go ahead and give our bookkeeper an office, and I think we've probably got some of those chairs up now. Um, oh, you can actually check the engravings to see what they've engraved. An image of a dwarf by Ast Abig Abanjanet. The Diminishment of Cheese by Lunra er, Lunrod... Lunrud Shockmug. The diminishment of cheese is there on the floor. Here is another one. Um, Uz... I get, I, this is, can't be the author's name, right? By, yeah, so this one is by Rakist as Doug Ravad. Uh, it is Oz... Azurushidish. The unspeakable saffron. <laughs> I love pronouncing things in this game. <laughs> The fortuitous... I'm just going to read the English part because otherwise I will stumble a lot. The fortuitous, the fortuitous gorge of rage. Uh, the corridor of romance. And the single temptation... There are such just amazing names in this. <laughs> like, they're really funny. <laughs> so, like, do look into those things. I, I do believe that all this stuff came in Dwarf Fortress well before they created, like, art in RimWorld. So, I'm not sure if that one was directly inspired or if they existed simultaneously. But, I mean, like, they kind of... I don't know. Now that Dwarf Fortress is on Steam, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, being someone who creates content in these games, like, it's just always nice to see the devs kind of like egging each other on, and I don't know, like, kind of the opposite of what I hear from complaints online. Like, people like, oh, this game is like this one. It's like, no, like they all, 
<laughs> like game devs love seeing each other's work. I don't know if you guys know that. But yeah, like it's, I don't know, it was very warm and co cozy looking at the Kit Fox Twitter the other day. Um, and just them like enjoying a good release. Anyway, getting on more with the, um, with the offices. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do um, another bedroom here. And we're going to try to keep putting our office people's bedrooms by their office. Obviously, that's very much a smart idea. We want to have our bookkeeper here now. So, Dumat, da, 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 whatever. I'm just going to say the first name for a moment. Um, you have that. That is your bedroom. There is no bed in your bedroom, though. However, we will put a bed in there for you because we like you and we wish for you to sleep. We'll probably start to designate out some more offices. We don't really have them yet. Let's also designate out another area for mining, because I think now we'll give our other dwarves proper bedrooms. And let's also go, what are you doing? I am paused. There we go. Um, and then we should probably go check in on our dwarves' needs in a moment again. Um, is Dwarf Fortress fun? I don't think it's like... It's not fun, it's a simulation. No, I'm not having fun, I'm engaged though. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like, you get, we'll get to the fun, I don't know, I feel like once you can kind of visualize it, it's fun. I, I, I feel like if I'm going to, can, well, whatever it is. I don't know, I'm having a good time personally because I just have a, I just have a brain that enjoys it, I suppose. Um, you are probably the same way if you were here. Let's go ahead and put down some chairs in our offices here. And everyone's office will look identical because we all work in cubicles and we're all working for the man. Um, okay, let's go ahead and put that chair down there. And then we can go up and let's... Uh, question chat, question chat. I don't know. I didn't see anything for designated desk. I felt like it was something other than table. But am I just putting down tables here for their desks in the office? Um, I'm pretty sure it's just tables the last time I checked. Is it tables? Yep, it's tables. Okay, thank you. I do appreciate that. Oh, here's the feather that I was seeing before. I'm sorry, I missed this. Stockpile links for the workshop. That is quite useful. Yes, someone had told me about the feather before and I missed that. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and do work orders. We'll do another one for a table. I do like this control F search. This is very nice. If I didn't have that, I would be scrolling through menus. Thank you, Tarn and Zach. Um, let's go ahead and put down more tables, um, or we will make the tables, and then they will come. So they are taking a while. I wonder if their hauling speed is actually decreased by, like, the heaviness of the rock. Because it always seems to me that they're like, oh, I'm carrying a stone, like, and then they speed up after that. <laughs> Doesn't it appear like that to you? It is decreased. Oh, the wheelbarrows. Could have yes, they do have a wheelbarrow somewhere around here. I can't remember where they put it. Um, uh, yeah, we should probably start to get those food and drink values showing up on the top bar. Well, as soon as we get that bookkeeper's office done, let's go ahead and just expand these stockpile zones because we still have more to do here. But there we go. Um, grim reminder of winter harp ships to come. A supply caravan from the deified mechanisms uh, is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of, antis of excuse me, inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft stores. Just such beautiful writing. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between prosperous future and slow and meaningless death. <laughs> like, what? Like what a what a what a wall of text to read. Um, I am gonna just pause here and we're gonna go through the alerts. Merchant trade need a depot to unload their goods. We never built a merchant trade depot uh, because I am slow. Let's go ahead and put that down somewhere. I'm pretty sure we put this outside. I think I'm just going to put it right outside of our cave entrance for right now. I'm not sure if this is going to need a better place to be defended, but we sure as hell won't um, survive long enough to see that. So let's go ahead and put that down. Um, is there anything really important for all this? Migrants have arrived. When do the migrants arrive? Oh, we had migrants arrive. I totally missed that. Wait a second. Let's check our units. Yep, we've had a bunch more dwarves arrive that I completely just neglected to notice. That can happen in Dwarf Fortress. I will say this, that like that is a, a message that used to be more, let's say, evident in non-Steam Legacy Dwarf Fortress. I just happened to not see it right there. Uh, we can ignore that. I just want to make sure I go through all these events. I do like this system. Uh, this is all the different, like stones that we've stricken we can go to all the events they're probably just at various parts of the world uh we haven't gone too deep down yet though i know for a fact so we haven't hit any like big caves or anything 
Recenter and expand options. Uh, is now summer, autumn has come, started raining, has cleared. I wish we had looked a bit more at the weather, but I've pretty much been preoccupied with the underground. Um, the office designations. Um, seeds, peace, and uh, we're probably going to die from a zombie invasion. Honestly, true. Uh, animal became the stray dog. That was the puppy grew up. Um, and we have finished the bills. And the outpost liaison has arrived. And merchants need a trade depot. So let's go ahead and build them a trade depot. Um, where is this? A uh, trade depot. Okay, there we go. Now, this is a rather large construction. It is nice to see it rather than just a bunch of X's and O's like it was in the, uh, <laughs> in, in Legacy version. I'll make it out of dolomite. I guess we have to do three. Interesting. Okay, we'll give them that as a job to do, and they will get to work on that. Again, I'm being extremely inefficient. Like, we're going through the game at a learning pace, and just, it takes it takes time for all these things to happen. Um, okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and see. Oh, we just got a raid from Giant Bomb. Thank you for the big raid, Giant Bomb. Let me just give you a quick shout out. Hey, thank you very, very much. I hope you guys have been enjoying Dwarf Fortress as much as we have. Hang on a second. Giant Bomb. Thank you, Giant Bomb. Oh. You guys were doing talk shows and podcasts. As always, this Very sounds exciting. for the love of my life. Gerald <laughs> Williams. Ah, oh, thank you, pal Nick. Uh, we should probably name a dwarf after Gerald Williams and Giant Bomb as well. Hey, thank you very much. Sorry about that. It took me a minute because we're like we're in really deep with Dwarf Fortress, but we're having a good time. And we're, uh, we're about to build the tables, which is very exciting. We have Willow to build the tables. And we actually, we don't have more than one, so this is unfortunate. I believe that that's about all that they need, though, is just a chair and a table. And then they could just repeatedly, like, stab the table in order to count how much stuff we have, right? Isn't that more or less a good summation of what occurs in Dwarf Fortress? Why do we keep going up into this section of the world, too? What is over here that's so interesting? Oh, they're going out and they're gathering crap from around the world. Okay, very exciting. Very exciting. Let's see if they've filled anything up in those... Okay, so they did put down a corpse. Or is that like some sort of animal? Is there a vermin that keeps going there? What are you? Two-legged rhino lizard remains. So we do have some refuse. Not a lot of it. We don't have a lot of it, so... Too bad. Too bad. But, you know, such is life. Such is life. Yeah, uh, 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 Dwarf Fortress has pretty good documentation and, like, you know, guides online if you want to, if you're willing to read a bit. Okay, broker requested, anyone requested depot, move goods to and from depot. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to trade. I'm really not good at it, so I, it's just going to be something that I'm just going to leave there. I'm just going to tell you right now, go to somebody else if you want to trade. Um, I'm, like, not good enough at Dwarf Fortress in order to do trading yet, so I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, we could go deep into it. No trader needed at Depot. Anyone requested at Depot? Oh, this is, like, highlighting. Let's just say anyone. <laughs> I guess. Now, there is a place that we can, like, request goods and so on and so forth, but I'm just going to live with this. Move goods to and from. I don't even want to do it. Because we're simply not ready to confront it. I just, I'm going to admit my own idiocy here. And I don't want to muddle through this this much. Because it would really slow and bog us down. So just go to somebody else for training. You're going to have to find a tutorial. I apologize for that. It is kind of a basic thing that could probably get me better. Although, when I play Dwarf Fortress, I like to play it like craft. Or basically any game. I like to craft my own stuff. I don't like to depend on like an external system in order to understand, like, the bare bones of stuff. And maybe that's just the way that I enjoy gaming, but, you know, I'm willing to live with my own flaws. Um, that's just the way I am. I don't know why that got so, like, psychological there. But look, we've actually cleared out almost all of the stones from all of our places. Who sh took a crap on this stool? It looks horrible. Oh, wait a second, we're going to have the... Nope, I'm just, I'm not even going to trade, really. You know, maybe send us some metal bars. I would like you to bring us some iron bars. What do you want? Price at 194% sounds like a great deal. Uh, they need tools. I don't want to go too deeply into, like, the messaging, but it is there if you want it. Um, again. 
let's just kind of like skip over that. Sweep that under the rug. We've got more willow tables. Oh my god, we have so many willow tables now. That's crazy. Did we designate the last office? We did not, so let's go ahead and do that. This is for our bookkeeper. So this is really one of the more important offices, so let's go ahead and do that. Accept, and I'm going to assign this one to our bookkeeper. I believe that's now our manager. Our, our expedition leader, manager, bookkeeper. So we've got three bedrooms and offices. So let's go ahead and see if our bookkeeper does a bit of a better job. That was such a fun sentence to say. Um, <laughs> do well, They're still kind of sleeping anywhere. You're sleeping on a table. You're sleeping in that random bed. I want to make the dwarves like real dwarf bedrooms, but is there anything else we need for our offices? I know we could start to put chests and like bookshelves and things like this in here. Um, but what else should we do? What is this? Primarily for the office, is there anything that's preventing us from getting the bookkeeper working? Because that's the one that I, I'm not entirely sure about. Um, our bookkeeper seems to be counting. Oh! Oh my god! We have begun the counting. This is so exciting. The fort is continuing now in mid-autumn, and we're getting to late autumn, of course. We've begun to do the counting on our resource. I just skipped ahead a little bit, because there were a few things we wanted to address. Just, I don't want to die in a stupid way. It's likely we will all starve to death. However, if I can slightly prevent that, I think that would be very exciting. So let's go ahead and do, um, let's, let's go ahead and make a fishery because there, there happen to be a lot of fish around here. We have a river, so we might as well take advantage of it. And I'm liking the way that this dolomite actually shows up on our constructions. Actually, um, we're going to make a, an easy meal. That sounds good. All right. Uh, Unrotten prepared meals. Prepare easy meal. How can I pre forbid them from using plump helmets? And this uh, amount of unrotten prepared meals, cookable and solid items, is greater than. So I guess we'll say if there's less than ten meals, though that number should probably be greater. Let's make it like twenty-five. Twenty-five is a pretty big number. I think I've established this in the stream. Twenty-five is a rather large number, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, go into the work orders and disable them. So let's go ahead and do that. So I guess we're going into materials, properties of the item being checked, um, type of the item being checked. I'm guessing materials. Let's just say plump. That's not how you spell plump. Plump helmet, man tissue, man tissue. Let's just say nothing that has the word plump in it. Plump helmet plant, plump helmet seeds. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, there are, aren't they like beings of the underdark or something like that? I don't want any of that. So no plump helmet man, whatever this is. Labor kitchen, did I do that right? Labor. Oh, that's very interesting. Permissions. Hmm, ingredient type number 33, so what is this type of permission? This type is restricted from cooking. This type is allowed to be brewed. Very exciting. Okay, so the steaming meal, it's not allowed, but the drink is okay. I'm assuming that this is right. This is good. I don't know why it didn't get undesignated from the other thing I did. Sometimes, wait a second, dimple cup? Cave weed. Oh, these are our other seeds and things like that that we have lying around. So the dimple cups, the cave weed, and all that we don't have. The drinks, though, dwarven wine, are, we're allowed to eat it. I guess it is somewhat like sustaining, like a like a strong stout, kind of makes you feel full. Um, but let's go ahead in, and we're going to make something in our fishery as well. Prepare a raw fish, catch live fish. I guess we should say that. Catch ten, all the time. Amount of items. Oh, wait, I've just learned how it's done. Restarts if completed. Checked daily. Uh, change the frequency that the... Ooh, this is actually quite interesting that you can change the frequency. Check the activation of the work order. Depend on the status of another work order. Now we're getting into things that I don't fully understand. Let's say at least... We want them to have, like, let's say 20. That seems like a good amount of fish. 20. There we go. Oh, we did it the same way already. All right, neither here nor there. Um, catch live fish. Now we've got a lot of other orders. Now, I'm curious, what exactly does prepare a raw fish? I guess that's like skin it or, I don't know, take off the scales or something like that. Like prepare it for cooking. Um, amount of unrotten fish is... Um, what's the difference between unrotten fish and unrotten raw fish? Let's just have both. Both. 
Think we're good? Think we're good? I will say this, there are definitely like orders that are so subtle here that are going on kind of like the RimWorld clothing orders that I'm simply not understanding here. You know, now I'm beginning to muddle through. We're getting to stuff that I don't fully understand. So we'll kind of be like bouncing back and forth between me learning things as we go and I'll be going to chat as well as like a few things here and there where I'm like, oh, I understand this again. I can fully explain this. Amazing. Like, so just keep that in mind from here on in, in this, uh, in this video or whatever this is going to be. This is going to be a VOD later on, but yeah, just keep that in mind as you're kind of playing along. Um, I don't have all the answers, but then again, like I saw players who have been playing this game for a long time. Struggling through a little bit of the Steam version, so there might be a few things here and there. But yeah, for the most part, like, I'm just going to go ahead and posit that out there for you, like, admitting my own ignorance ahead of time. Anyway, moving along. Um, I, I'm beginning to notice that we're going to need yet even more storage space for our stones. So I'm just going to kind of unabashedly just start digging deep, deep, deep into these walls. I mean, this map is huge. Like, look at all the space that we have. This is crazy. Um, let's just keep going deeper and deeper under the mountain. Right, we do that like learn even keep and have resolved to claim our lost forgotten gold. You know the whole the thing that they sang in the Hobbit. Ah, uh, it does kind of bring me back to Thorin Oakenshield, which is very exciting. These must be the trader over here who are offering something for us. We don't have a broker. Oh, we don't have a broker. Yes, we have a bookkeeper, but not a broker. Okay, so then let's get ourselves a broker and start muddling through this new system. So let's go ahead and say um, Z for zones. We'll get an office here. And we'll just start to confront systems that we really don't have too much experience in. And we will say... Um, well, we don't actually have the office for that, so we'll go back into nobles. And we will designate a broker. Um, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I wonder if we should undesignate our old people after we get those migrants. How do we undesignate somebody from an office? Um, could we just change it to someone else? Well, no one's really good, and you've suddenly somehow become adept at this. And you've become... Oh, no. No one is very good at any of it. Never mind. Okay, so we will have a different broker. Keep in mind, we have Bim, Kumil, and Dumat uh, on different offices. So it seems like it would be a bad idea to have them on two at once, just right off the top of them, my head. Doran Letmasatum, the carpenter, seems to be pretty good at lying, so I guess you'll make a good broker. C conversationalist, there we go. Uh, adequate consoler, comedian, flatter. You're pretty good at everything. You're probably, like, you have probably some um, serious psychological issues going on here, but we'll just leave you, we'll just make you our broker. That's fine, I'm sure. Um, and then let's go ahead and put in another bedroom. We will do that there. Um, the game that requires a PhD. Not really a P I don't think it's so hard. I think a lot of it is just content that people don't understand. Like, it's not like you need a high IQ to play this game. Like, you just need... You probably have a high IQ if you're playing this game. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Like, I explain to friends, like, what vi games do you create videos on? And I'm like, uh, they're like, I don't see how anyone would ever enjoy that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why I like it either. Uh, but yeah, here, we all find ourselves together. Uh, so why is Rackist living in this bedroom as well? Is there any way I can deassign him from it? Let's just undesignate the whole room. I don't know how to deassign one. I guess he just moved in here, so let's go ahead and do that. No, this is going to be the bedroom for someone else, because you're not as important as her. Um, let's go ahead and do bedroom. We'll do this. And we're... This is... What was her name? Doris? Dorum? Uh, oh no, we never even gave it to her. Doran Let Ma Satam. There we go. She is our broker, and we will... Why the hell does this guy think it's his office as well? Oh, perhaps are they husband and wife? Hang on a second. Let me go check. Let me go check. They are married! Okay, this makes sense. But then, will they need a bigger bed? Uh, let's go see them. Spouse! Arrakis drum darches. That's a great, that's a great name. That's a great name. Okay, that makes sense. The same size of bed is fine. Okay, great. Do they need two beds? Do they sleep separately? Like it's, uh, like it's the 1800s? You know? Well, I guess in the 1800s, they would have just slept in a heap with the family. Like, maybe in the early 1800s, you know? Or when was that? The 1700s? 
Yeah, like it's the 50s, let's say, you know, leaving room for the Holy Spirit in there or whatever it was, as they as they would say. OK, we'll assign them two in there. Uh, all three will stay. Wait, are you kidding me? Oh, we. I regret now yesterday telling chat to try to convince me that they knew what they were talking about and make things up about Dwarf Fortress and my game just crashed. We are back. Our game crashed, uh, so we turned on se seasonal saving, and we have pretty much done all the bookkeeping. I got thrown back in time, but we're trying to prepare defenses in case if something goes wrong. So I've been learning a lot from chat, and I've just been bumbling through a lot on my own. But we have now linked a lever, so hopefully this will go right and no one will die. I'm going to pull the lever and I'm going to unpause. Oh no, it actually becomes a work order and everyone just stands around on it. Well, I very may well kill one of my dwarves right now. Um, I think that this is exciting. And it looks like one of my dwarves is going to be on the lever as we pull it. Oh, they waited until he got in. That's very nice that they did that. They didn't really have to do that for him, but now it's turned into sort of like just a drawbridge door. I'm told that... Wait, a dog died? Who saw the... Nobody saw that. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, maybe we just got lucky. Probably we did. <laughs> that usually happens to me in this game. Uh, no, it does not appear as if anyone died. It does not appear as if that has happened anyway. But this is supposed to be a very good defense or something. I put it in my meeting area. We linked the lever with a mechanical workshop. Let me just go a little bit over some of the things that we have done, just because quite a lot has happened. And also two people are coming into stream. Okay, so our drawbridge is stupidly long, but then it gets stupidly short somehow. We could put a pit underneath it. We might do that. Um, you know, I didn't really plan this out in terms of defenses, because I didn't even think we'd get here, but here we are. Very fun. Um, no, the do wait, did the dog get killed? <laughs> uh, the dog did get squished. Well, you know, I told you it was going to happen. Everyone's upset now that the dog... You guys weren't upset about the cat. You weren't upset about the cat. Well, either way, we thought it would be one or the other. We've got some plump helmets. Why do we not have seeds? We just had a million seeds a minute ago. This... There were just totally a bazillion seeds, like, one second ago. Oh, no. Uh, this is where I said something would go wrong that I didn't understand. Yeah, we just totally had, like, a million plump helmet so, uh, seeds. I don't know what's going on wrong. They all got planted. Oh, maybe they did all get planted. Fair. Fair. Ah, okay, so then they're in storage, because that's... yeah. I'm just gonna go double-check. No, they don't seem to be in the... Oh no, here they come back. I guess we just came at a very unfortunate time when they were in planting seasons. Okay, they... No, they didn't cook the seeds. There weren't any of them there. We've basically forbid all of that. We're gonna go back into our work labors. We're gonna go back into kitchen. Yeah, we've forbid cooking in our plump seeds. So they shouldn't be doing that. Or if they did, then it's due to something else. I know that's happening to a lot of streamers today, but please do not say that to me because that has been like my grave fear for the entire stream and I have done everything in my power to prevent it. So that is the one that is the one way that I am getting like alt F for this this stream. Um Digging under constructed bridges. I think it's still allowed. I'm pretty much just going to leave the drawbridge there though without a pit under it for now. If we manage to get a, a real trap where we could kill enemies from it, that would be amazing. However, that being said, um, I don't really want to go into constructing elaborate defenses when we haven't got our dwarves fully fed yet, and I'm not even entirely sure of it. So let's go ahead and just continue our stockpile zones and um, be a bit ignorant for a little bit longer as we just kind of go through. Phew! Okay, so the things that we did continue on are we got a fishery going so that we can hopefully prepare some of the fish, and we designated quite a lot of fish for them to hopefully catch. It, we've caught 150 fish? That is quite good. Uh, oh, yes, actually, it does say that we have 388 food. Maybe I should be setting this number even higher. Repair raw fish. It says that we have a lot of food. And yet it keeps going down, and I want to make sure that we have more for the winter. So let's just go, say, like, 200. Let's just go aim high, 200. I'm doing it. We'll probably get a lot of rotten food. And we will all probably die somehow horribly, but whatever. Okay, and we are definitely going to need more than that in terms of meals. So let's say, like, let's say 200 meals. I'm going to be very ambitious here. 
Can we salt the fish? Yeah, I know. I'm well, I'm not really ready beyond this point. Anyway, the other thing I just want to go over uh, is that we did make it a mechanics workshop, and the way that we got this bridge up, because we didn't, we did it off screen. I just kind of want to show a little bit. Um, we've been getting really good help from chat here, so thank you guys to this for this again. Um, B N for constructions, and then B, and then you can designate out any bridge link. All we did was build a bridge, and then we did B N, um, or sorry, B. M for machines and fluids, and then we made a lever. But in order to get the lever, we had to go down to our mechanics workshop down here, and we had to build, you could add a task to make rock me mechanisms, which I didn't know that you could make mechanisms out of rock. I thought that we needed metal. So this is very cool. And traction bench is like a medical thing, which we're not doing right now. I think it's if somebody breaks their leg and then they Basically, you have to, like, put them on a rack or something to fix the, like, I don't know how it works. There's, like, medieval pseudoscience going on here, and it's awesome. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. So, other things that we wanted were bags, right, for seeds. We might leave that one for a little while, though. Is everyone sleeping? Yes, also, too, we haven't assigned all of our offices because we did get sucked into a wormhole back in time. We did assign... Uh, you're right. Somehow somebody different got assigned to this bedroom. So we wanted this one to go to Dorum, who is our, or Doran, who is our broker. Thank you for that. Uh, we had the husband and wife sleeping together. I believe that was exactly when the game crashed, and I'm going to just save, uh, new file, whatever. I should probably be giving these things better names, because it is a bit hard to read which one's which, but here we are. We find ourselves here again. Our bedrooms are somewhat more done looking, and we do have quite a lot of dwarves who are homeless right now, so I, I want to make sure that they get bedrooms. So let's go ahead and just do some more mining designations. Uh, and we also figured out how to do the priorities on mining, too. I'll leave these all at one. They're by default at four. But I like it when they get right to work at it, so I think we'll leave that at one. That is quite good. Okay, so I'm being told that, what is it, control R... Is that record? And then control P is... No, wh what was the macro? Because this is basically where you can blueprint in Dwarf Fortress, and these things exist for the main game, but now I'm starting to feel more ready to muddle through, and I'm I am genuinely feeling a bit more confident in my knowledge. A lot of this game is about confidence, and I had none of it when we started this stream, but now it is starting to, like, occur to me that I am good at not... I mean, we'll all die somehow, and I'll be sad in a minute, but... Yeah, like you you need to you need to bumble through is what I've been trying to say. Let's go ahead and make more doors. Um what was it? There were such amazing macros and I will well you can go into the pause menu in this and you can create your own macros in this, which is amazing. It's like coding the game. That's why it's that's why it's fun. Look at how quickly he did all of that. And yes, we do have this many dwarves, I think. Control R is for macros. Believe Control R to save. Control R for macros. Oh yeah, it says recording up there in the top uh, left. I wonder if that is con recording keystrokes or just mouse stuff. This is where you could be a super power user. Mm, we could try it for a second. Like, what if I say D or M? You know, mine out this. Finish record R. Okay, so then what is R? How do you finish off this macro? Only because if you can get this to work, it's really cool. Uh, who just said it? I just lost it in chat. Oh, wait a second. Um, what, yeah, how do we cause it to play? Is it control pl P? Yeah, play. See there, play just appeared on the top right. But if we do, we need to like mouse over. Hmm, I couldn't really get it to do it. Yeah, I got it to play, but I don't, for some reason, it's not doing my thing. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing here, but, I mean, that feature exists, and it's cool. You can read up on it. I don't know. I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention, because this was in the original, or in Legacy Dwarf Fortress. Somebody brought that to my attention a few years ago, when I was playing. A w it's been a while. Uh, and it kind of blew my mind. There was something with mining that I was able to do, too. I thought I could nail it right there, but I just seem to be having something right, like, slightly off. Enable keyboard cursor. Oh, where do you enable keyboard cursor in settings? Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, let's do this right now. We might as well. I mean, this is quite a cool thing to do. So, K 
game enable where is the enable keyboard cursor thank you very much cheer uh uh cheat che uh, cheater thank you very much control s hmm control s nope oh, there we go keyboard cursor enabled so then if we do that i'm gonna just save for a second Num. Num. there we go um i will name these things more official things when we're done and it did save. Okay, so now if we have that thing enabled, can we... Just because I'm saying, like, we make a lot of bedrooms here. So, M, mine, mine. It's still recording. And finish the recording. So now if we do control P over there. Hmm, it didn't do it. I'm clearly doing something, like, slightly wrong here. Control S. Whoa, what is that? What the hell is that? What did I even just bring up? Did it do it again? I don't even know what I did here. There's clearly some amazing stuff. Like, I just might have pulled out Excalibur, but I don't fully know what I'm doing, so I don't want to belabor that too much. I, I wanted to bring it up because I want you to know that it's there, but again, like, it's going to take me some time. And I know when I try to do these things on stream, I just kind of explode with confusion, so I'm just going to leave it for now. But thank you for trying to help me. Thank you for at least trying. It's kind of like just how can we help him but he's just in such a bad position but yeah i mean most of these things are fairly easy macros and we don't have like hundreds of dwarves in our fortress yet by the time that we get there though we will start using those types of things because some of this stuff could become kind of maddening if you tried to do it that way all the time okay so p doors which of course starts with the letter r again and there we are and go for that and we actually ran out of doors Nice that these all have different colorations. This is very enjoyable because I don't believe that beds had different colors before. Brought up a macro name to save the macro as. Oh, I wonder if that's there. Well, that is under settings. That part I can point you to. Um, I think it's under key bindings macros. Yeah, there we go. Um, control R to record slash step. Oh, so this is exactly the same feature. Control S to save a macro to a file. Oh, so we just weren't hitting control S. So let's say... What if we did that? Okay, maybe we can do this now. I'm just going to make more bedrooms because... Oh, why not? I believe that this is directly underneath our drawbridge. <laughs> is it? Wait, it's this square. Yeah, it, it totally is. We shouldn't have mined here at all. Oh, no. Well, okay. Well, then we'll just put another bridge there. Uh, <laughs> this is getting really stupid. I wanted to send invaders down a hole so that they could just kind of splat in there. But uh, we got kind of carried away with these macros. <laughs> yeah, it's a shortcut to the bedroom. Um, <laughs> let's see if we can do that, though. We might as well. D. Oh, no, I keep thinking it's D for designate. Uh, M mine. No, now I don't want that to record that. Um, from this square, record M upward, then this way. Stop recording. Save the macro as a bedroom. Something like that. We did that. Now let's load it up. Bedroom, which is enter. And then how do we play the macro? Control P. Oh, well, I think we have to go here. So if we shift over slightly. It's opened the mining menu. I didn't do any of that. It opened the mining menu. So when I hit Control P, it opens up the mining menu. But then for some reason, like, it doesn't know where to do it on the screen. Or I'm not doing it right. Whatever it is, very cool. I will probably send invaders down the bedroom death pit or something like that later on. But let's just go over for a second because this is now getting to, like, more power user advanced stuff. And it's quite cool. But, I mean, my kind of intention with this whole stream was to bring in a beginner player. I said from the beginning, if you're good at this game, you'll... Just bang your head against a wall. So let's kind of go back for the sake of everybody who's new here playing and just summarize what we've done so far in our fort. Because I, I think this is quite a splendid start as long as we don't run out of food and then I misled everyone. Um, but yeah, that would be quite cool. Let's also just designate out more of this because you can never have enough rock. You really can't. Um, here we go. So what we did today were the following. 
Should I pause time? I feel just so glad that my dwarves are all, like, humming along at work now. At the beginning, they spend so much time being idle that I don't even want to pause it. We didn't get an invasion, but, I mean, we might. That would be very nice. Uh, we have plump helmet spawns. Are we running low on these? I've still kind of got to figure this out. We'll check on our food stores, but this might be a good place to save too, mind you. Because we are going to be struggling through the next video. This was our amazing struggle session this time. But for right now, we managed to begin our fort by digging into the side of a mountain. And I'm going to go ahead back to the beginning and say I suggest that you do this because of the rain thing and water coming into the fort. I knew there was a reason why, but I couldn't remember why. But in the middle of the stream, somebody told me. So thank you for that again. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting who it was right now. But yes, water can come into your fort or something horrible like that. Also, too, try to just stay away from water because you can get water in the walls. You can get water coming through the walls. Unfortunately, your dwarves do have like some common sense here and they try to stop it, but uh, it can happen and don't. Just try to stay away from them in general. We didn't really go very deep down the mountain, but what we did was to get a hole in the side of the wall. This is very defensible, and I think one tile is a pretty good way to start, just for a simple defense. We were able to get the drawbridge here, which is just a drawbridge to nothing. Apparently we killed a dog. I didn't see it, so we might not as well have killed the dog. But I'm gonna go now check the units list, and did we kill a dog? No, look, all three dogs are there. There were three to begin with, there are three at the end. That's probably all of them. So. I didn't even anticipate we'd get that. This is important because when you do get enemies, it's kind of like Rimworld in that way and just trying to keep it one wide. At least as far as I understand it. Though I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to combat. So I, I think I'm happy with it. We got a trade depot up, we, though we didn't trade it because we have no idea what we're doing. We're going downstairs uh, above ground. I should have done this a different way, but I just kind of messed it up. We'll see if we can fix this later on. Oh, actually, for right now, let's see if we can fix this just super fast before we're done. T. Um, no. Constructions. Stairs. Can we build the stair up? Or maybe we could build the stair down from the up. But I also don't really want to link these because I don't want my farms to be linked to my stairway. Otherwise, then enemies could just come through the farms. I'd rather just have them leave the base and go up to the farms. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Pun intended. Uh... We smoothed out our entrance hall, and my god, it looks great. It has the charcoal, maladors, it has all of this stuff in here. What an amazing place to live. And then we went down deeper into the earth. We created a stockpile floor. This is getting kind of out of hand, and we should probably fix it up more because it's it doesn't really look that good. But hey, at least it's somewhat symmetrical, or it's on the way to becoming symmetrical. And then we created a workshop floor, which I don't really know the way to keep this organized, so I've just kind of been going in order of, like, what we're using, just to kind of keep a, a mental log. Hopefully that's helpful for learning. Uh, then we went one floor down, and we started creating bedrooms. And these are for our main dwarves. I guess what we could do now, like, to kind of finish this up, is just make our bedrooms a little bit nicer, because we've got bare bones right here. I don't think we're going to die. We still might, but let's just make our bedrooms a little bit nicer. So, your dwarves have, like, personal property, right? At least as far as I understand it. So we want to give them a chest. I think we might need to construct this at the carpentry workshop, but let's go ahead and do, I think... Storing not yeah, so chests and coffers are used in personal bedrooms for storing non-clothing objects. They're also used in some uh, zone-based locations like taverns, hospitals, blah, 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 blah. We haven't even gotten to, like, our dining room yet and stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and see if we can just make a chest. No, we do need to make it in the in the workshop. So let's go back over to the carpentry area. We'll go over to our work orders, and then we'll do um, chest. There we go. So let's make like 10 wooden chests. We want those available at all times. We're going to have some of those. Um, yes, a cabinet. A cabinet, right? Isn't that what it's called? So let's go ahead and... Yeah, what is the cabinet? Used in personal bedrooms for storing clothing objects. Um, there's no facing to furniture, right, in this game. It's all just, there's no rotation, as far as I understand it. And also, too, I know there were, like, access squares, but aren't there some squares that they can't step over in certain furniture? I think that's true for workshops, but they seem to be moving over just about everything all right. So I don't know if I'm wrong about that. Yeah, for workshops there are. But it seems like they can just move over everything else. Like, there were people sleeping on a table. Um... 
but there's no rotation yet. So, okay, let's do that. Um, let's go ahead and in back into our carpentry workshop and we'll go back and make another um, cabinet. Yeah, there we go, wooden cabinet. So let's make another, let's say 10 of those. And did I make this repeating? Amount of empty boxes. Okay, I guess they're just designated as boxes. So we'll do that so that it repeats for when they don't have any more. I think I'm doing that right. I think. Maybe I'm not. Whatever I'm doing. Work orders. Work order like perfection micromanagement is still not my forte perfectly. Let's do 10 empty cabinets so that there's still people with that. And good. So now they should be making chests and cabinets so that everyone has a place to store all of their personal property and stuff like that. Um, how many bedrooms do we have and how many dwarves do we have? Because the, quite a lot have come along. One, two, oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Up to our manager, 18, 19, 20. So we've got 20 dwarves here living now. Some of them are married, or at least this one is married. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've got one extra bedroom. We'll be making more because we'll get up to like hundreds of dwarves over time. And look, we are making more drinks. This is good. Um... Oh yeah, I forgot about population on top. Thank you. Um, was that in Legacy? I feel like I didn't have that. Either way, whatever it is, counting. Um, B and then F and then uh, H for chest. There we go. And let's we've got this one repeating. So let's just put these in everyone's bedroom. Who needs it? Oh, we didn't make them. I think we made them. Okay. We've got chests being made. We've got cabinets being made. We've got food on the line. Is there anything else that we should really mess with? We've got one angry dwarf. Yes, this is actually quite frightening. Um, uh, who is it? <laughs> you. Uh, who is not happy? Ast Adam Letmos. I know practically nothing about managing dwarf mood. Aside from, like... Let's make the stuff that they are upset about. Being creative is upsetting him. He wants to acquire an object. He wants to drink alcohol. And he wants to eat a good meal. And he wants to fight. And he also wants to... This guy might not just be that good in the beginning. Like, should we just get rid of him? He might just be a bad person. Humiliated at the lack of chairs. Wait a minute, where was he? Does it say that he was... Yes, <laughs> she felt humiliated at the lack of chairs. Okay, this is a need that I slightly now... I mean, I could throw her under the bridge. Running around babbling. So she's like... Uh, she's like speaking in tongues or something like that. So we should probably get the dining room ready. I mean, there is the like... They love it when they have a lavish area. It is kind of like Rimworld in that way. So, you know, word of warning. Also too, it looks like we don't have any logs. So let's designate some more of those. Um, where are we? Where? You will frequently ask yourself into our freshest. Where am I? Okay, there we are. I've I found, I mean, like, once you get over the basic view stuff, though, I, I think it's fairly easy to understand what's going on visually in this game. Um, there we go. We've got... I just designated quite a lot of trees for chopping. That will keep them occupied for a while, though. So let's have them do that. Um, we have so many dwarves, man. It's almost like... Well, you'll regret if you... Like, worry about idleness all the time. But I'm thinking, now that we've got the meeting area, we've got some basic defense here. I'm not really going to go so elaborate. So let's have, like, their th their dining room up here. We might as well, right? It's near the beautiful area over there. So let's just make, like, a very beautiful entrance hall or something like that. Um, people asking how to zoom out, control, and mouse wheel. Um, let's go ahead and build our di uh, dining room. We'll build a dining room, otherwise this will just be something else later on. Yeah, like this could be for their tavern. I always like keeping the nice things together with the meeting area, so we'll do that. We'll mine out this area over here, and I guess let's make this about the same dimensions as that last room. So we'll do... Uh, yeah, hopefully the ceiling won't fall on them if we do that. So our minor dwarves should get to work on that. And I suppose that we will have everyone smooth boy that out. Let's make sure we've got this set to a priority one again. And it does appear that it is set to a priority one. And then we're going to go ahead and V. 
and smooth. And then we'll paint faces on it. This is so cool, the face painting. That's nice. So there we go. Now, deeper underground, while they're working on that, I'm going to have them work on a stone workers workshop and we'll do we've, we've made these rock thrones there was a reason why i did this before so we're going to make tables out of rock because i just think that that's very like cool um uh like in our dining room wouldn't you think that dwarves would dine on stone and rock it just seems very characteristic of them so we'll do that nobody tell him about the clowns is this going to be like The Sims 1 when there's just a clown that murders us all in the end? That would be very upsetting. I hope you will tell me about that before I die. Designate some dwarves to military training and just kind of forget about them. Probably a good idea. Yeah, we could do that like near our entrance area. Though we do need a training room as well. Let's get into that stuff because yeah, we could have like, what is it? An archery zone or something like that? Archery range, yeah. And a barracks. Train, sleep, and store equipment there. That seems like a good idea to me. And we could do that at the front of the base where, like, enemies might come through. Seeing us dining. How embarrassing. Let's do, um, yeah, we'll do, like, a training zone down here. Now, at this point, I'm going to suggest, uh, look, I'm doing things because they're simple. The way that I'm designating them out. I don't really know the perfect layout for a fortress. But, yeah, you know, like, I figure stockpile right off the main floor between the workshops and the overworld seems like a decent idea. We could probably do more stockpiles somewhere else later on, but um, bedrooms, like a bit more hidden and tucked in, I suppose that makes sense. And then later on, we'll dig deeper and, and go further under the mountain. Now, what the hell is that? Somebody just left a shirt there. Sheep will dress. Urcher, uh, you've taken off your dress. Why? Never mind her for right now. I want to get the dining room done. Never mind that. <laughs> like, if I confront the, the real-world problems. The X shows its damage level. Practice weapons to train. They do have some things. The world has passed into the... I thought we all died for a second. That was the message. <laughs> there are moments like that in this game. Um, water gatherers. Probably a good idea, too. Let's. I want to focus on one thing at a time, though. Everybody in chat has very good suggestions. But I, I don't really want to overwhelm myself, either. I want to focus on just one thing at a time right here. Let's do furniture, and we'll do... Let's do a table and some chairs again. Or can we do, like, thrones? Where is thrones? That's not under constructions, right? No, furniture. I mean, like, the, the good ones. Or maybe it's just... It says a different material that it's made of. We'll do, like, um that dolomite thrones it may just look like a stool but ignore that they're thrones what do the um pluses and the minuses beside these things mean i'm guessing that's like quality i'm not really sure here about that so we'll just do it this way okay let's have like eight seating areas in here we'll do cedar dolomite thrones more dolomite thrones Let's just have everything be of dolomite as we've done pretty much so far in this entire fort. Um, there we go. I have an idea. Oh, I, I'm liking the way this is turning out. I didn't even intend for it to be this nice, but everything is going to be splendidly spaced. And then we could put one table in the middle of each of these. There we go. Okay, so now we do B and F and T for table. That one does make a little bit more sense. And do yeah, we'll do the dolomite tables in there, and I think we're running out of dolomite tables, so we'll give them a bit more time, but the idea is to have four tables where we could sit, like, 16 people. It looks like some of these are just kind of crappy. It doesn't really tell me the quality of it, though, does it? Dolomite throne. Inspect it. Weight 85 runes. Value 20... This is interesting. Now I don't even really know what we're inspecting. I guess we could sell it. The human and elven sylphs have completely fallen, so it's literally just dwarves living now. That is quite cool. You need one table per chair? Really? I thought that they could sit around them. Uh, then don't do this. We'll just have to put more tables everywhere. Okay, that is quite unfortunate. I did not know that. Alright, well, whatever. Really? I thought that this was... 
I thought that that was just people trying to make their forts look like extra splendid by doing that. Okay, then we can't do this. Well, at least the other people could just sit in the other chairs and watch the other person eat. Um, okay, other stuff too though, but let's actually designate this out as D dining hall. Or we could call this like a tavern. We would want a tavern. Um, do we have a tavern in here? That's strange, there's no tavern. Is that the dining hall or are those two the same? Okay, now I am clearly just muddling through. So, you know, I did, I said what I had to, it is what it is. Um, we don't really need to assign people, I suppose, but we'll call that the dining hall. I think we might need another door here, or I feel like we should just have one, sort of. Peach wood doors, there we are. B and P and, there we go. Wow, I'm surprised at how quickly I'm picking up the hotkeys, I gotta say. I didn't think that would be so easy because sometimes you just get overwhelmed and give up and then you die and you cry but we haven't so far this time well I haven't died I I don't think any of my population have died at least V will smooth we're just gonna smooth boy out the rest of this and then yeah we'll carve in faces because they just look so damn good I may as well have it be a nice place as well right okay now this is going to be the training area so let's Z, we'll zone this. Sometimes it would tell you like what you're missing from an area if you want to get better with it. Yeah, the basics of Dwarf Fortress are not that bad. But I mean, as compared with the normal game, like I spent five hours playing it yesterday and I only barely got started and that's as an, a later player. So certainly not easy. Such so house squads will use this space. Now we're getting into military though. Okay, it's been a long time since I created squads in Dwarf Fortress. Um, I think I did them once or twice, and they, my militaries have not been successful. So I think we've pretty much reached the extent of most of my knowledge on the basics of this game. From here on in, I am going to be learning, and so I do kind of want to cut it short there. Um, we may stream for a little bit longer, but I'm going to cut the YouTube VOD there. What are we at? three hours and 30 minutes <laughs> and but despite our like 45 minute interlude where the game crashed i think that's actually a pretty decent primer for somebody starting the game now you have like you know you have a very basic drawbridge defense you can click on the lever and you can <laughs> pull it and hopefully that will prevent the enemies from coming in sooner your dwarves will do a little bit to defend themselves, but not as much as if we actually train here. We've got a dining area, we've got a meeting hall, we've got our, um, we did deconstruct the wagon. Uh, we got a couple of, like, refuse piles and corpse areas set out. We did have a river. We had a pretty nice spawn area, too, I gotta say. Do, do be picky about your spawn area. If you don't get what you think you deserve, then just respawn in. Don't be afraid to just do the tutorial thing, because you could figure that out later. Um, you just kind of want to get the basics down. But we did get our stockpiles. We got our wood. We got our food. I can't really see it. Apparently we have more food than that, but whatever. I'm going to have to do a little bit more micromanaging here. We have our stones. Important to get a big area for those. It looks okay. That's important. We got a couple of uh, workshops out, and we got bedrooms, offices. We're digging deeper. I think that's a nice place to start. I, I feel like if I go any further, I'm just going to struggle. So I do want to keep the videos somewhat consistent in my level of knowledge in each one. So we've pretty much run out on that. Um, I'm going to save the game. And yeah, I uh, I guess this will be a series unless if we die climactically in like five minutes. So we will be uh, end one. We'll just call that there. But yeah, hopefully we will keep this fort alive for like a decent amount of time.